MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions. Repel Pest Solutions is a full-service pest control company protecting residential and commercial properties from nuisance pests that carry germs and diseases. They are a small, family-run business from Marshfield, licensed, insured, competitively priced. We work to understand your needs and offer an integrated pest solution that's environmentally friendly. Don't be afraid to bug us. Moi Health & Wellness Moi Health & Wellness is owned and operated by nurse practitioner Christine Murphy. We are an integrative wellness center offering medical weight loss, men's testosterone therapy, functional medicine consults and labs, vitamin therapy, Advadex laser skin resurfacing, Botox and dye sport, teeth whitening, and so much more. Moi Health & Wellness has three locations in Lakeville, Marshfield, and Plymouth. And Road to Responsibility. Founded in 1988, Road to Responsibility's mission is to provide the means, the opportunity, and the support necessary to allow citizens with disabilities to take their place as productive members of the community. We are committed to providing all individuals with opportunities to truly live in the community. Through our services, we are proud to enrich and improve the lives of every individual, one person at a time. From James G. Anderson Field here at Marshfield High School, two 4-1 teams ready to duke it out in the Patriot League Conference matchup. We have a good one ahead of us here on Marshfield Community Media. Will Nicholson alongside Andrew Youngworth. Andrew, it's great to be back home and it's great to be calling Marshfield football once again. Couldn't agree with you more after almost a month of not being at home. We're finally back here at James G. Anderson. And for a change, we have an afternoon game. We have a nice 2 yeah. p.m. kickoff here at Marshfield. Weather could not be better. We're looking at 70, sunny, and no wind whatsoever. Perfect conditions here at Marshfield High School. It is looking beautiful here at James G. Anderson. Rams won the toss, elected to receive, and Varholak ready to kick off for the Harbormen. Both teams coming at 4-1. and one. We are underway. It's a little pop kick to the left. It's going to take a bounce and roll out of bounds. Flag will come in. Richardson on the coverage. Ekstrom laying down a hit as well, but it will set up Marshfield with great field position once again. Andrew, both teams come in here four and one. Marshfield obviously the dominant win versus Silver Lake, 48 to six, and then Hingham one versus Whitman Hanson, 27 to six. So some high-powered offense we're getting ready to see. Absolutely, both teams with very solid records. Both teams coming off of big wins. Only difference here is that in the strength of schedule, Hingham has not been able to play the, t the competition that Marshfield has. So this is Hingham's first true test of the year. And let's see if Marshfield can keep their momentum rolling here in this Patriot League matchup. And already you're seeing a little change in the offense. We've got some more people out there. A quick start by the Rams, and that will be a false start. Back them up five yards, and we will replay first down on the opening drive. The word is today you got a couple of guys still hurt. you got Crowley and Nicholson, who's out with a concussion. Then coming back, Charlie Carroll is in gear. He is active, as well as Cole Summers. You know, not Aiden Summers, the tight end, but Cole, the receiver, could see some activity today. So the Rams will be backed up by five. First down and 15. It's true to the right of the senior quarterback, Moss. He's going to take the snap. Looking to throw, and he's got plenty of time. Stepping up in the pocket still. No pressure. It's a deep ball to Antonio. Wide open. It's a one-play touchdown. No one will catch Jake D'Antonio. Marshfield, first play, first touchdown, a six to nothing lead. I mean, you can't get a much more perfect start than that, minus the false start. Tormas gunning it out to a wide open D'Antonio, who somehow sneaked his way through all the safeties in the backfield, able to get a really quick and easy touchdown, six nothing Marshfield. What's underappreciated is how much time Tor Moss had in the pocket. That's phenomenal blocking from the O-line, who are currently one starter down, as you have already mentioned. And yeah, we mentioned at the beginning of the year, there was a great article written by, I believe, the Boston Globe, talking about the strengths and the weaknesses of this Marshfield offense. You know, the strengths were all the skill players coming back. One of the questions were, will the offensive line step up? They're young. They've answered the call so far. They went for two. Blinking, you missed it. It won't be good. It was short. Rams go for two, will not convert. You know, as we were saying, one of the weaknesses, quote unquote, for this Marshfield team, they said coming in, can this offensive line hold up? And they did perfectly right there as they have all year. Yeah, absolutely. This old line able to lock down women, um, excuse me, Hingham's D line, which they have done a phenomenal job doing in the past couple of weeks. Last week coming off a 48 to six win, Silver Lake's defense had nothing on Marshfield's offense. And looking at last year's matchup between these two teams, Marshfield was up 36-6 at the half when they 
put in their substitution players. Ended up winning 43-22. So Marshfield had their way with Hingham last year. And by the looks of it, so far, they're having their way just one play in. That seems to be the look so far. Marshfield offense continues to be dominant. That was Tormas's ninth touchdown so far. He's got 854 yards through the air, 266 on the ground through the first five games. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. Maybe the turnovers get down a little bit, but senior quarterback, dual threat has played phenomenal so far. And that's what he's been doing the past two years. He's just carrying it on from last year. Tor Moss, perfect high school quarterback. Oh, Drasopoulos kicked it deep, and it's right on the one yard line. Hingham has to run this one back, and it's gonna be right there. Did the ball come out? Marshfield thinks they have it. It was a fumble kickoff return. Let's see the call from the officials, which way we will be heading. So the Harbormen do actually recover, but it was a fumble. And Drasopoulos with a massive kick, he kicks it deep. Hingham thinks it's gonna go out. That was Finn O'Brien, the senior, who had to get on it and make sure it didn't get recovered by the Rams. What a kick by Drasopoulos. Yeah, that ball could not have bounced worse for Hingham, could not have bounced better for Marshfield. Hingham is gonna take possession at, I think, the three yard line as we have an injured Ram on the field down there. Can't really make out who that is yet, but we got a Ram injured on the special teams unit. Yeah, training staff is gonna go out and make sure that they are okay. So we're gonna take a break here on MCM. Rams lead six to nothing. We'll be back, don't go anywhere. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions. Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility. And we are back here, James G. Anderson. It was Keegan Holt went down momentarily, but he seems to be good. Maybe a little cramping. It. You know, we mentioned it's hot out here today. It's uh, it's great weather, but I mean that will play a part in cramping. Yeah, I mean it's not what you want to see. Hopefully, it's not a serious injury. Marshall's defense looking up. 11:41 in the down first here. quarter. Hang him from their own five yard line. It's a pitch play to the outside and hit immediately by the Marshfield D line. It's gonna be a loss of yards. I think that was Ekstrom who got there first, as well as the rest of that core of this defense that has been so good. Bring up second down. Yeah, this defense, as you mentioned, has been on fire. That was Jake Ekstrom and Dylan Burho able to get to that running back instantly and not only get him nowhere, but he actually lost oh, yards there. That's gonna be second and 12 on the six yard line. I think they're trying to get Jack Stevens into the game. Marshfield changes their defense up a lot. You know, they have a heavy set that they can go in. They like to bring in Drosopoulos sometimes, bring in an extra cover man, which is what they got right now. It'll be second down. It's about a three-yard loss, two-yard loss, second down and 12. And hang on, the Hardman will take the snap, hand off to the back, up the middle, nowhere to go once again, and Marshfield will shut it down. The defensive line playing well so far. Yeah, everyone there was ready for that. And this defense, in their last affair, only let up six points by the half. Ekstrom had a sack. Molander had a tackle for loss. These veteran defenders are too familiar with this Hingham offense. So here comes the change for the Rams. Burho will come out, and they'll bring in number 12. They'll bring in Phoenix Beauregard, an extra cover man, as it's third and long for the Harbormen. Got to mention, this is Noel Ruscio at quarterback for Hingham. And they like to shift around their running backs a good amount, but they are in a tough spot right now. Third and long, Ruscio going to take the snap. He's looking to throw. He has to step up in the pocket. Pressure's coming. He's going to throw over the middle. Off a Marshfield defender, Beauregard there on the coverage. And hang him. Dire need now. They're going to have to punt this one away from about their own five or six yard line. Yeah, this should set Marshfield up for a great return. If you take a look at midfield, Jake Brilliant is currently standing on Hingham's side of the field. So Marshfield is expecting to get phenomenal field position. Let's see if the special teams unit can get the job done. 
And it'll be, once again, interesting there. We're going to try and keep you updated. Charlie Carroll, who was last year's best receiver, is geared up today. He had that injury in his leg. He was in a boot for a little bit, but he is back. Whether he'll play today or not, we're not sure, but that'll be a good thing to look at. This punt will go just short of Brilliant, who will return. It makes a cut, can't break the tackle, but good coverage by the senior receiver. He'll get down to the Hingham 40-yard line, and the Rams offense will take over. As you just mentioned, Charlie Carroll may be looking to get some snaps today. Cole Summers is not in full uniform, so Summers yeah. is guaranteed to be out for this week's game. We Hopefully we see him in, in gear next week, but Cole Summers will not be making the return next week, this week. However, we look to be seeing some more production from number 88, Aiden Summers, the tight end. Yeah. You see him walking out onto the field now. Marshall looking to get more than one play on offense, maybe utilize some other guys here. 100%. I mean, we've talked about how big Summers has been with Crowley going down. He's had to step up, play a big role, and he has answered the call when he's had to. Rams first down and 10 from the opposing 40-yard line. Moss going to send Brilliant in motion to the right, take the snap early, jump once again. And we'll see who this was against. Maybe the Rams jumped early on this one. Yeah, these are just more foolish penalties from Marshfield. Yeah, they're going to back the Rams up five. Be a first down and 15. That's the, the second Rams. false start we've seen already 15. from Marshfield. Could that be the new offensive line? They move some guys around. It's Gerard at center who hasn't played since St. John's prep, I believe, with the sophomore Nicholson at right tackle going down. They've had to shuffle some guys around. Senior captain Tommy Bongelotti has moved over to replace him. And Justin Amaral, another sophomore who has stepped up playing in that right guard position. Yeah, I mean, the old line, I mean, it's most it's most of the same players. They're just flipped around a little bit. And yep. something as simple as a slight position change can cause so many miscues on offense. 100%. I mean, the snap count right now, Gerard probably not caught up to speed just yet. It's been Bongelotti snapping for a long time. But we'll reset here. Rams trying to... Make their second drive as good as their first. Mass going to take the snap. He's going to throw the screen to Brilliant. Brilliant to the outside. He gets a big block, but a good play by the defense. Brilliant actually stayed on his feet there for longer than you would think. Won't pick up a first down, only a gain of a little. Bring up second down. Yeah, Hingham's defense is all over that. They weren't able to. They were able to make sure Brilliant wasn't able to gain any yardage. Brilliant still able to gain three or four yards with that pretty good broken tackle. We got second and ten here because of the false start penalty. So they're right Klein, back to where they started. Ryan Klein, the Harborman, on the tackle as well. Second down and nine. Brilliant goes back and forth in motion. They're going to take the snap. Moss is going to keep it himself. Up the middle. Tor Moss diving forward, and he has plenty for a first down. The senior quarterback uses his dual threat ability, and the Rams over the chains. Yeah, and Hingham completely fell for that one. That Daventry Tormas read option is so unbelievably dangerous. They're going to go quick here again. Moss, play action. He's looking to throw. Deep. End zone. Touchdown. No. Off the hands of his intended receiver. Believe that was Aiden Summers, the tight end. Thought he was going to be able to reel that one in. And Summers, a chance for his first touchdown of the year. Not quite. And I believe Summers thought he was able to reel that one in, too. He was not very happy that he let that one drop. He's trying to make a huge statement here. And I believe he's still going to continue to do that. 9.07 remaining in the first. Rams will go right back to the line. Second down and 10. Moss in the gun. True to his right. He'll take the snap. Throw the screen to True. True gets a block. Getting a field to the 10. The 5. Diving to the pylon. And he stayed in bounds the whole way. Touchdown, Marshfield. David True punches home another. And the Rams go two for two on their drives. We've been waiting to see this from Davin True for a little bit now. Davin True kind of kind of has woken up since his not so great game against Mansfield. Yep. Silver Lake and Hingham, Davin True so far has had an amazing game today and he had a fantastic game last week. You love to see that from a guy who had 23 touchdowns the year prior. Yeah, he was a touchdown machine last year. He's cooled it off a little bit. And the Rams have responded by going through the air. Well, we got the two-point attempt, or the extra point attempt, but the Rams went for two last time, but now Drosopoulos will jump back and get ready to kick this one through the uprights. Brilliant is the holder. Snap to Brilliant, it's good. Drosopoulos will kick it through the uprights over the snack shack of Marshfield that will hit the roof. And we have a 13 to nothing lead here early in the first quarter for the Rams. You can't ask for a much better start than what we've had here so far. 13-0 Marshfield, defense has done their part, offense has done their part. Everything's gone swillingly for Marshfield here so far in this game. We're only three minutes in. 
for those of you watching at home, we have nine minutes left in the first quarter. Already two touchdowns for Marshfield's offense. And Marshfield's defense currently has let up negative one yards. It has been a dominant first quarter for the Rams. I mean, we talk about last year. I mean, Davin True came in here, rushed for three touchdowns, two yards short of 100 yards on the day. Carroll with 101 receiving. They're up 36 to six at half. But the most important thing I think you can note from this Rams team, they only punted one time last year versus Hingham. And with with a second half of substitution players, that is such an impressive stat for Marshfield. I mean, putting up 43, only punting once, is something that should never go unnoticed. And Drosopoulos getting ready to kick this one back off. We have on your scoreboard at home, we have 13 to nothing. It says 12 right now, but I'm pretty sure Drosopoulos made that kick, so we will keep you updated with that. We'll keep Sean Leary in the studio updated as well, running that scoreboard. Drosopoulos' kick will land in the end zone, and great punt once again at Nick Drosopoulos, number zero. And the Hardmen finally have a chance to put a drive together from not their own five-yard line. Yeah, I mean, with that touchback, that gives Hingham by far their best field position of the day so far. Um, this Marshall defense so far has been absolutely dominant. Alex Molander leads the team with 70 tackles. Then some other stud players. Charlie Leach has 55 tackles. Will Devine with 47 tackles. Coming off of a pick six last week. As is Dylan Burho, the D end with a pick six. So Marshall's defense cannot be feeling any more momentum than they have this past couple of weeks. It was a party in the end zone last week versus Silver Lake for the Rams defense. Two pick sixes on the day. Trying to repeat that success. Rusio going to take the snap. Throw over the middle. That one is caught. No, incomplete dropped by the intended receiver for the Hardman. Rusio's pass will fall incomplete. Intended for Bailey will bring up second down. And Will Devine able to get a deflection on that on that pass, causing the incompletion. That was a great play by Will Devine that goes unnoticed by a good amount of people. Will Devine was, was actually able to tip that pass and cause the ball to go off course. Marshfield going to bring in Burho, bring in an extra defensive end. Beauregard will check out for now. I think that's what makes this Rams defense so dynamic, their ability to bring in different guys for situations. Yeah, their depth is unbelievable. You got 20 guys on this defense. You could sub in and out, and you would have no problem with them being in there. Aruka trusts so many of his defensive guys. Second down and 10. Ruscio in the gun. Going to take the snap. Hand off to the back. The Rams D-line says no. Not going to let him go anywhere. A whole swarm of Rams defenders. Tackle for a loss. It'll be third down. Molander got there first. The linebacker duo of Molander and Leach are all over. Senior captain Alex... No, that's senior captain... That's Ryan St. Ryan St. Um, Croix. They're all over him. And St. Croix, the captain for this team, running back, and they're going to need him to step up big. That's where Marshall has been vulnerable this year. We talk about all the great running backs that they've played so far. They're going to have to answer another one here. Third down and long for the Harborman. Ruscio in the gun. He's going to take the snap. Roll out to his right. Pressure's coming. He's running out of time. Divine gets there. The ball is loose. It's going the other way. Another defensive touchdown for the Rams. A fumble. A scoop and score. The Rams defense three touchdowns in the last two games. This Marshall defense in the past couple of weeks has been near perfection. A scoop and score, something that we haven't seen in all, all season, I believe. I feel like that's the first scoop and score this year. Will Devine forcing the fumble. Charlie Leach taking that right to the end zone. No problem. That's going to make it 19 nothing Marshfield. Charlie Leach, once again, he's played phenomenal for this team this year. Another guy who has had to step up, play a big role. The players with an interception so far for the Rams. Devine has two. Bergamesca, Leary, Bongelotti, Burrow. And I mean, everyone for the Rams has contributed so far this year on the defensive side. Rams attempting the extra point. Drosopoulos will kick this one through the uprights and good. extra point is good. And that will bring the score. It says 19 to nothing. Did Drosopoulos miss a kick? The ref signaled that it was good earlier in the game, I believe. So we're gonna stick, I think, right now, 20 to nothing, because I'm I'm pretty confident that's the score. But nonetheless, Rams, big lead here in the first quarter. Yeah, you you really could not have asked for a much better start. Marshall defense gonna look to shut down this Hingham offense again, because their quarterback right now is currently Jake Varlak. Noel Varlak. Noel Noel Ruscio is not in right now. They have the junior go. in, and. Putting a, the, your backup quarterback against the Marshfield defense, as we have learned in the past, does not tend to work out very well. Silver Lake 
had had to use their emergency quarterback last week, resulted in two pick sixes and an absolutely stunning Marshall defense. Yeah, it was the junior Sean Barry who went down for Silver Lake and an injury that you hate to see, and that led to disaster the rest of the way for the Lakers. Rosopoulos ready to kick this one off. He's going to boot it deep, and this one will be fielded once again. This is O'Brien getting up the middle. He has a gap, but the Marshall Rams will close it down. Decent return, get about to that 28-yard line. Maybe a little shorter, actually. Nonetheless, Harvardman first and 10. If you're Hingham here, you got to figure out how to get any sort of momentum on offense. Because right now, it's 19-0 with eight minutes left in the first. We, we were talking about how there was only nine minutes, a decent amount ago. Only one minute has passed. And since then, we've had a scoop and score and a solid kick. And now, Hingham needs to try to gain some momentum. Because we're four minutes in and Marshall's already secured three touchdowns. Apologies to the junior Varholak, who is the quarterback as well. So apologies to him getting that wrong. We'll fix that. Varholak going to take the snap. Wanted to throw the slant. He has to roll out to the right. Throw it deep in that one. We'll see if it's caught. They say no. It hit the ground incomplete. Good coverage by the Rams. Second down. Absolutely. And I agree with the call from the ref. You were able to hear the noise of the ball hitting the turf first. Okay, That's going to... So Update, they missed the field goal on the first, or the extra point, excuse me. So it is 19 to nothing. Apologies for that scoreboard. Got it right. It's funny. It looks perfect from up it here. It looks good, yeah. <laughs> we'll say it looked good. Drosopoulos, who has been automatic all year as well. You thought that he was uh, going to punch that one through, but it's 19 to nothing. Nonetheless, for the Rams, who have had a phenomenal defensive stand so far. Offense 2-2 two two on drives, but the defense... Ben, the talk right now. Second town and 10. Farholak going to hand this one up the middle. Big gap opens up for the running back. And a gain of about seven or six. We'll see where they spot it, but it'll bring up second down. And those are the kinds of plays that Hingham's going to need to do if they want to gain some momentum back in this game. That was senior captain Ryan St. Croix, another senior captain running back. As we've mentioned, Marshfield's faced a really good lineup of running backs. Yeah. So Ryan St. Croix has some shoes to fill if he wants to match their competition against this Marshall defense. And that is where the Rams have struggled, being able to stop these big-time running backs who have been so electric. I mean, they've held them to a certain extent, but just feels like these running backs at one point or another break one loose. It'll be third down at about four. Varholak in the gun, going to send a receiver in motion, take the snap, look to throw, over the middle, caught. is going to wrap him up, but a first down picked up for the Harbormen, and that's their first first down of the game. Pass is caught by TJ Real, it'll be first oh, down. Yeah, Marshall was in a zone defense there, not too much communication, able to leave that man wide open on the slant route. That's gonna be a first down for Hingham. Marshall can't get too relaxed here. They gotta still stand on business and get the job done. Aruka was, uh, seems unhappy with the defense's production. That's JT Real, excuse me, not TJ, who made the catch. I think we have a ram down right now. That's so Cosman, I, think, I believe. Now that will be a huge loss for them. So I think we're going to take a quick break as, as quick as we can right now and we'll get you back here on MCM. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Folks, we understand you always have a choice. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions, Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility. The we are back here, James G. Anderson Field. It was Cosman that went down. So the Rams just going to bring in Keegan Holt went in. There we go. So they're going to bring in an extra linebacker. They're going to go three down linemen. First down and 10. Barhola going to take the snap. LaCroix up the middle once again. A big gap. Molander and Bergamesco once again have to come up to make the play. That'll be a big gain. About seven or eight. Bring up second down. It's good news seeing Keegan Holt come back in because he was the one who got hurt on that kickoff earlier in the game. So it's good to see that it wasn't a serious injury. Keegan Holt able to come right back into the game. As we just saw there, Dylan Burho subbed in for Phoenix Board Guards. They're going to be more D-line heavy here on just second and two on Marshall's 47. It'll be a second down. You got Varholak in the gun. Going to send tight end in motion. Two receivers to his right. He'll take the snap. Play action, he'll throw to the outside to his receiver. He's got a first down and more. Still breaking tackles, but stepped out of bounds. But enough picked up 
for the first down for the Harbormen. This is exactly what we were talking about. Hingham needed something to spark anything. Getting on Marshfield's side of the field on Marshfield's 38. Hingham starting to get a little sense of a uh, little sense of identity here. Marshfield can't get too relaxed. They need to be able to shut Hingham down and get the ball back. 6-10 remaining in the first quarter. I mean, like quite opposite of, of what we had a couple games. We've had a quick, pacey game so far. A lot of stoppage in this one and a lot of scoring from the Rams, which has led to that. 6-10 in the first quarter. First down and 10 for the Hartman. Varholak has LaCroix to his right. He'll send a man in motion. Hand off to the motion man. Getting upfield. Getting a good gain. Keeps his head down and keeps his feet moving. Gain of about seven oh, once again in these big chunk plays for the Hartman on the ground. And the story, the, of, the story of Hingham's offense so far has been their old lineman creating a bunch of holes for the running back, creating great blocking opportunities for these wide receiver screens. This old lineman for Hingham is no joke, and this D lineman's going to have to adjust to that pretty quickly here. Chase Bailey, the junior, was the motion man on the handoff, and he picks up a gain of eight. Second down and two, Varholak in the gun, going to send tight end in motion right. Back behind him, he'll take the snap, handoff to LaCroix, up the middle, trying to get a field with the Rams defensive line there for a tackle for loss, bring up third down. That's what we were looking for right there from this Marshall D-line. David Sheen and Jack Stevens were right there waiting for him. That's going to make it third and two. I don't think they gained any yardage. Marshfield going to look to try to force a fourth down opportunity because you got to imagine Hingham goes for it at that spot right there on the field. I mean, down 19, it feels like you would have to at this point try and get back into the game. They're going to bring in an extra receiver right now, so the tight end checked out for the hard minute. That is number 24, Charlie Shape. Bring in another wide receiver. Try and go through the air here. It was a tackle for loss, so it's a third down and about four for the Harborman. Varholak in the gun, he's got him back behind him and a tight formation. Hang on, I'm gonna take the snap. Varholak has time. It's running out though. He has to try and scramble forward. He has a gap, getting upfield. He will be hit pretty hard by that Rams secondary, but he will pick up a first down. Something Marshall hasn't come across in a couple of weeks is a mobile quarterback who's able to not only throw the ball, but be able to escape those tough situations. So if Marshall isn't able to stop Varholak's speed, that could become a problem later on in the game. It was Devine and Molander had to come up and make the stop for the Rams. Will Devine been an electric player for this team, a senior captain, as the Rams will bring in another defensive end in Burhau on the first down. Yeah, Marshall looks D-line heavy here, and I can see why their D-line been the story of this game so far, forcing the fumble and forcing good opportunities. For Holak and a hand up to LaCroix once again. Up the middle, the Rams D-line will be right there. Only a gain of about one. Bring up second down. Hingham's currently on Marshall's 25-yard line. They're starting to get within field goal range. You got some, you got some um, scrapping going on between some of these Marshall and Hingham players. It's starting to get a little scrappy here. I believe there's a flag on the floor. I think there's a flag on the field. Oh, we'll see what the call is Flag there. I mean, these Patriot League matchups, always a rivalry. You know, these guys don't live too far apart, so it's always a uh, little bit extra going Absolutely. into it. Both and teams trying to be undefeated in conference. They're going to call be, that on Marshall. Yeah, personal foul against the Rams. Rams crowd, as they always do, will tell you exactly how they feel about yeah, the call. Of course. And especially Marshfield and Hingham is a very well-known rivalry among the South Shore. These two towns go at it in every single sport. Football yep. is no exception. So you're going to see some scrap here. Hingham, with that penalty, has fantastic field position at the Marshfield 11. 4.05 in the first. Rams with a 19-point lead. For Holak sends his tight end in motion, and an offensive lineman of the Harborman jumps. So we'll have another penalty. We'll back him up five more. A That's lot of penalties here in the first. Yeah, <laughs> I was just about to say that. That's the third false start. In this game, from both teams combined, that's the third false start. That's going to set them back to the 16-yard line. That's got to be. That's going to give Marshall a sense of momentum right there. As now it is first and 15, Marshall's going to try to see what they can do because Hingham's first down down line is the one. So it's pretty close to fourth and. I mean, first and goal on the 16. I think the video board just yeah I showed a picture of a ref playing Snoop Dogg. That's the first time I've seen. That graphic. But yeah, I kind of got distracted by that I as I was talking that. there. You absolutely <laughs> love to see that. The Be Something Special BSS organization of Marshfield making that happen. It's a quick pass to the outside. Bergameska can't make the tackle. They'll say he stepped out of bounds. So first down, I believe, picked up. We have first down and goal. 
And Hingham moving quick. I barely even saw the snap. They just went. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Something Hingham has been very good at so far in this drive, at least, is catching Marshfield off guard. They've been catching Marshfield off their feet. Marshfield has gotten a little bit relaxed with that three touchdown cushion, but Hingham is telling them that they better take them seriously because Hingham's offense can run down this field. Bergameska has to come out momentarily. Beauregard will check in. It's, uh, it's not a first down, excuse me. It'll be second down and about three. Coming up, it's Varholak in the gun. He'll take the snap, hand off to a motion man, to the outside, getting up field. And enough for a first down, not quite the touchdown just yet. It's number three, JT Real. And the Harbormen continue to move the chains. Flag comes in, though, so we'll see. The call is on this. If it's a holding or it's something, we'll back the Harbormen way up. This looks like it's going to be on Hingham. Hingham trying to play their case to the refs. I believe this might be a holding call. You might be right here, Will. The officials taking their time. We've seen a bunch of flags be thrown so far today. Yeah, and in previous games, we have seen barely any flags thrown. Yeah. Most of the time, the refs have kind of let the players play. Something I find really interesting, Will, is you take a look at Marshfield's sideline, you take a look at Hingham's sideline, notice the difference in the amount of players on each team's sideline. Oh, yeah. I would argue Marshfield has at least 30 more players. And look at how far back that field position is going to go. That's going to bring wow. them to the 17-yard line. That's a huge penalty. The chop block is the call. So it'll be second down and long. It's second down and 15, actually. So massive swing for the Rams. But, you know, as you mentioned, Marshfield always has guys ready to go. We saw last week when the game started to get out of hand, Marshfield dresses all their JV guys, get them an opportunity to play in the varsity game. So the Rams always dress their younger guys in case they need them. It'll be second down and 15. Varholak going to send Bailey in motion to the right. Another whistle blown. And Marshfield going to take a timeout. So we will take a break here at MCM. 3.33 remaining in the first quarter. Rams have a 19 to nothing lead. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions, Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility. We're back here at James G. Anderson Field, Marshfield High School homecoming weekend. And the Rams with a sizable 19 to nothing lead. They just took a timeout on defense. Second and 15 coming up for the Hartman. Varholak in the gun. He's got LaCroix behind him. He'll take the snap. Look at the throw. He has to step up in the pocket. Devine will wrap him up at the feet. And the rest of the Rams will come over to make the play. Burho in on the tackle as well. They'll bring up third down and long for the Harbormen. Yeah, as you mentioned, Devine able to get there first. Sheehan and Leach finishing the job. They weren't able to fall for his mobility that time. He almost was able to sneak away, but not, for, not if it weren't for some reassurance from the defensive line. Yeah, that D-line been holding strong for the Rams. They've had themselves a game so far today. It'll be third down and 11 for the Harbormen. you got to think, I mean, three is not going to be enough here. They need to try and go for a touchdown. you got to get this in a fourth and manageable position. Yeah, absolutely. When you're three touchdowns down, four minutes into the game, that's the least you can do. Something do, something good that they've done is they've, they've already killed five minutes on this one drive. Barholak going to throw to the outside. That ball is caught. Going for a first down and to the goal line. We'll see what the call is. They say he will be short of the goal line, but a huge first down picked up for the Harbormen. Yeah, so now Hingham's got first and goal on the one yard line. So that's not what you want to see if you're Marshfield. Hingham is set up perfectly here. And as we mentioned, the time is ticking down with Hingham on offense. They've killed just over six minutes on this drive, 19-0 Marshfield. That's 2.20 remaining in the first quarter. Harbourman first and 10, and a Ram player just fell down and got right back up. <laughs> it's number 55, Charlie Leach, who 
hit the tech for a moment, and then I had to come out, and I think Aruka's talking to him right now. I have not seen that in a while. Yeah, Aruka was really confused with that call there. That's going to be checking into the game is number 33, Anthony Kane, the junior linebacker, who had a phenomenal game that last week, was able to do a bunch for this Marshfield team. I've never, <laughs> never seen a player hit the field like that for <laughs> yeah, that a was timeout crazy. and get right back up. First down and goal, Varhola going to hand it up to LaCroix up the middle, diving to the goal line, and he is in for a touchdown. The Harborman answer, and it'll be 19 to 6. Yeah, and that's something that was desperately needed for Hingham. They were able to put some points on the board and cancel the shutout and put a cut into Marshall's lead. Now it's time to see if Marshall's offense is going to be able to drive right down the field again and do what they've been doing. And that will be the question for the Rams. They've only had really two drives so far. They're two for two on those drives. So the defense, excuse me, the offense for the Rams has been on the sideline for a minute now as the extra point will be attempted. This is 21 Henry Sellers for the Harbor men getting ready to kick this one away. He is a junior. Snap, hold, both good. This one will be kicked, and I think they shanked it right. No, he just got it through that upright. So a 19 to seven score. Rams still lead, but that was a big drive to respond by the Harborman. Yeah, that was a huge drive there from Hingham. Marshall is gonna try to look to bounce back on offense here. Every time a, the other team kicks a field goal or an extra point, I'm always looking at Jamison Bongelotti on the edge. He almost yeah. got to that one again. <laughs> He is an absolute demon on those extra points or He's done it a few goals. times this year where he's blocked a couple, and the Rams special teams unit has been very, very good so far this year. We got here in the notes, I mean, we got to mention Fakaisen, the sophomore, backup running back. He'll back up true every now and then, but he has 167 return yards on the year so far, so he has been phenomenal in the return game. We'll see if he can get more done with 2.06 remaining. I think Varholak also kicks this one off for the team. Talk about a utility player. I mean, I getting the quarterback and the kickoff guy, <laughs> something special. He will get ready to boot this one away. Marshfield back deep. I believe it's a True and Fakaisen both back there to return it deep. This one will be returned by D'Antonio who got hit with True and that's not what you wanted. D'Antonio and True run into each other. Miscommunication and D'Antonio has to fall to a knee. First down and 10 coming up for the Rams offense. Yeah, miscommunication right there. I mean, I pr I'm pretty sure everyone believed that that was True's ball. D'Antonio had to run back a decent amount for it. That's how he should have known that True was going to be able to get there first. But miscommunication. D'Antonio is still able to secure it. Yeah. Marshall is going to have the ball at the 24-yard line. Let's see if they're able to continue rolling on offense and drive the ball down the field. Yeah, not a bad field position start for the Rams. Again, they've been two for two on drives. It's a D'Antonio reception touchdown, then a Davin True run, and Charlie Leach got a defensive touchdown to take it the other way. First down and 10, Summers goes in motion. They're gonna hand it off to True. True falling forward up the middle, he'll get a gain. About three or four will bring up second down. Davin True off to a phenomenal start today. Last year against Hingham, he had 98 rushing yards and three touchdowns, even though he got pulled at some point during the third quarter able to make that mark in that little amount of time. So True had a great game last year. They're going to hand off to Brilliant, getting to the outside, breaking tackles, and another good stop for the Hingham Harborman. The Rams could not get the edge. Bring up third down. I think the Rams are experimenting a little bit here. They've been putting in and out number 86, Sean Chesbro, trying to get him active, see what he's got with all the injuries. A minute 25 remaining in the first. A huge third down and five coming up for the Rams. Hard count by Moss, won't get anyone and we'll have to look to the sideline to get another play. Moss, he'll take the snap, he'll look to throw, screen, true, trying to get up field, falling forward, does he have enough? No, he will be just short, it'll be a fourth down and, see the spot, it's fourth down and one, and the offense will stay on the field for Marshfield. This is a super interesting drive, I have not seen Marshfield get shut down like this in weeks, considering what happened in Silver Lake last week. Fourth down and one, hard count. Didn't get anyone to jump from the Hardman. Someone jumped and Aruka thought he should have got the penalty. Not quite, D'Antonio in motion. They'll take the snap. Hand off to D'Antonio getting to the outside. He's got enough for a first down and the Rams will move the chains. If you look at Hingham's defenders there, they were sure that Moss was gonna keep that one himself. They were not ready for the D'Antonio oh, yeah. jet sweep. Marshall able to convert the first down, but they're gonna have to drive down the field because Marshall 
almost getting a three and out is not something you normally see. The Rams will go quick. Moss with time. He'll step up in the pocket and he'll take off. True with a great block downfield and Richardson hits another one. The skill position for the Rams doing a great job and a little extra after the play getting right into Luke Richardson's face and a flag will be thrown. Mental mistakes by the Harbormen. Yeah, that was number eight Hudson Treza and Luke Richardson having some having some beef on the sides and the coaches telling Luke to settle down that there's some flags on the field. I think that these might offset. And that's what we've talked about earlier, Marshall Dingham, huge rivalry. Tensions yep. may our tensions are gonna rise, that's gonna happen, but you gotta keep your composure. And that's senior captain Devin True is telling Luke to calm down right now. That's what you want to see from yep. the senior captain. Going and grabbing him, telling me he's gotta keep his head cool, and that's sophomore Luke Richardson too, who they need on the field. D'Antonio will come out, bring Chesbro back in. But yeah, I mean, Luke Richardson, a massive piece of this team, and they're offsetting personal fouls. But you gotta mention, those Ram skill positions hit some great blocks downfield. We got 20.5 remaining in the first quarter. Chesbro goes in motion to the right. Moss gonna take the snap, hand off to True, who's got a gap. True up the middle, puts his shoulder pads into a defender, right down to the 40, and a first down picked up for the Rams. Yeah, True able to easily gain double digit yards there. Devin True has had his way so far in this game. He's only rushed a couple times, but every run has been meaningful. Time continues to run, three seconds left. Will the Rams have time to get off another play? They will. Moss will take the snap. Deep ball, looking for Brilliant. Comes back around to make the catch. Brilliant to the end zone. Touchdown, Marshfield. A back shoulder ball for Jake Brilliant, and the Rams will score again. That was unbelievable. Tor Moss had three guys coming right at his head. O-line not able to do their job correctly there. But Tormas able to find Brilliant, Brilliant able to make his way into the end zone. There are some flags on the field. Yeah, flags coming in, so we'll have to see what the call is on that. Will this touchdown get called back? Because that was a beauty from Brilliant. I think they might call offensive pass interference on Brilliant, because I did see some shoving from him there. Let's see what the call is. I'm going to talk to Aruka right now, and Tor coming to the sideline. Tormas, the senior quarterback, and the rest of the offensive guys coming off too. So. As of right now, it looks like it'll stand. Maybe it was something downfield, or you know, we've seen the Rams get an excessive celebration already this year. Yeah, it's happened multiple times. As we mentioned, tensions flare, so do emotions. It's yep. an emotional game, man. Football's an emotional game, especially here at Marshfield. It, me it means something different here. Hundred percent. So twenty-five to nothing remains on the scoreboard, and Shaq Brian Chikosis just threw up the touchdown signal. So I'm going to take his word for it. Say that one is good, and the extra point unit is on right now for the Rams. So the touchdown will stand, and the Rams will try this formation once again. And we'll see if they'll go for two this time around. No, the line will come in, and they'll get ready to kick this one away. So the touchdown for Brilliant will stand. Yeah, that one's going to stand there from Jake Brilliant. I wonder if they're going to get called there for offensive pass interference, but it's going to stick. Chrysopolis's kick will be no good once again. So Nick Drosopoulos misses another one. It will stay 25 to nothing. And that will also be the end of the first quarter Rams lead 25 to nothing. It has been dominant for, Mar or sorry, 25 to seven, excuse me, is the score. So the Rams dominant first quarter. We'll take a break here on Marshfield Community Media. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions, Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility. Welcome back to James G. Anderson Field here in Marshfield, Massachusetts. First quarter action, Rams lead 25 to seven, and they will get ready to kick this one back off to the Harbormen Drosopoulos. 
We'll boot this one away in just a moment, but it's been such a good game for the Rams so far. A real complete game. Offensive touchdowns, defensive touchdowns, they've been everywhere. Couldn't have said it better myself. This offense has been perf perfect. They have not let up anything yet. The only little show of weakness on the offense was that fourth down where they had to convert it there, but they were able to convert it and then turn it into a Jake Brilliant touchdown to end off the quarter. As that kick's going to go out of bounds, it's going to be a flag. Yeah, that one will fall out of bounds. Jameson Bongelotti thrown on the Jets to try and get that one. We'll get in time. So Drasopoulos kicked that one out of bounds. It'll be good position for the Harbormen who just came off of a touchdown drive. The Marchfield defense once again looking to make a stand as yeah. they will take the field. Yeah, Hingham's offense pretty, pretty handily drove down the field last time. Every play was seven or eight yards at least. Marshall's defense going to look to try to get to how they were at the beginning of this game where Hingham had no room for air at towards the beginning of the first quarter. Be a first down and 10 coming up for the Harbor men. I mean, they're talking something over right now. They're trying to figure out where the ball will be spotted. And there's the call against Marshall. Be spotted at the 45 yard line. Marshall was backed up further with that penalty as well. So from their own 45, great field position. Barholak in the gun. He's got a back behind him. Send a man in motion. Take the snap handoff to LaCroix up the middle. And the Marshfield defensive line will hit him for a gain of one. Absolutely. The defense was ready. Dylan Burrow and Jack Stevens were right there waiting for him. This Marshfield defensive line for most of this game has held their own against Hingham's running game. Minus a couple of eight or nine yard rushes. Burrow will come out. Beauregard will come in. That's been a substitution we've been seeing all game. They've been oh, yeah. swapping back and forth with each other. Depending on whether Marshfield likes a 3D lineman or a 4D lineman, they've yeah. been swapping out Borgard and Burrow back and forth. And if you take a look at the D-line, number 99, Andrew Cosman, is back in the game after go. his injury earlier. So Cosman and Keegan Holt look to be all good. Needed that. It's second down and nine. Blitz coming for the Rams. Barholak going to throw. Big catch by his receiver. And a first down picked up by the Harborman. Try to get a number on that. I believe that is number 19, and that is Kevin Nicholas. And it'll be a first down for the Harborman. That was a great throw by Varhol. Like, yeah, Keegan Holt on the man. He was tight up against him, too. Not much room for that receiver to catch the ball. That was a great throw by Varhol, like, with all the pressure that was on him during the blitz. And we're looking for the Rams to make another big stop here on defense. They've had a defensive touchdown already, but these past couple of drives, let up a little more than they would like. It'll be a first down and 10. Varholak in the gun. He's got LaCroix behind him. Three receivers to the left. He'll send one in motion. Hand off. Now play action. Pressure coming. Varholak has to roll all the way out to the right. He's got a receiver. And Bongelotti and Divine there on the coverage. But I think Divine got banged up on his shoulder. He's holding it right now. Pass will fall incomplete. He'll bring up second down. Yeah, Divine holding that left shoulder. Let's hope he's okay. During the play, that was phenomenal pressure there from Dylan Burho. Almost able to sack him down. Unable to. That's going to be incomplete make at second and ten. Good start there from Marshall, and that's in the set of downs. Yeah, and Will Devine is tough as nails. He for sure does not want to come out of the game. He'll try and fight through this one. I think Marshfield looking right now. See if he's okay. Devine will stay in. I mean, talk about a guy. You know, I mean, talk about toughness. I mean, that's Will Devine. Absolutely. I mean, Will Devine. He's just a stud, man. He's a stud. Be second down and 10. Neil going to go in motion. Hand off to LaCroix up the middle. Ekstrom, the first man there to make the tackle, as well as Cosman on that hey, defensive Jordan. line. It will bring up a third oh, down, no eight. gain. Yeah, Ekstrom was right there waiting for him. He tackled him down. Then if you notice, he did a little step over over him <laughs> during that pile up there. Rush weren't really able to see that one. That's going to make a third and 10, no gain there. Ekstrom able to shut him down. Rams will go with it. Heavy secondary, Burho will come out, Bogard will come back in, Keegan Holton as well. And Vine still holding that shoulder just a little bit, but fighting through it. Under 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter, Rams have a 25 to seven lead and a huge third down coming up for the Harbormen. They'll go even receivers each side with two. Barholak in the gun, LaCroix behind him. He'll take the snap, look at a throw, throw a slant to the outside, that ball will fall off the fingertips of his intended receiver, intended for Kevin Nicholas. It'll be fourth down and 10. Punt unit will come on for the Harbormen. That's what Marshall needed right there. He needed to get the defense off, get the offense back on, but most importantly, I think the defensive staff is just gonna take a quick look at Divine's shoulder, make sure he's okay. Their quarterback is also the, the punter. Punt. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's so checking off all the boxes. 
Barholak doing everything right now for this team. He kicks off. He's the quarterback. I mean, he's ran the ball a few times, so he has speed, and he's also the punter. The jack of all trades for Varholak. He'll take the snap, and it's a fake. Penalty flag will be thrown. A throw to the outside. That will feel incomplete intended for Nicholas once again. Flag was thrown, and I believe it was on Hingham, so I don't think the penalty will matter. And it won't. So turnover on downs. The Rams, great field position right now. Spotted at about that 44-yard line, maybe the 43. Their offense will take over. So I'm not questioning myself if he really is the punter or if that was just to fake the punt. Because that was Hingham's first punt of the game, and we don't know if it was the punter or not. Yeah. Regardless, Marshall is going to take possession on their own 43-yard line. Another great spot to start off with the football. Let's see if Marshall's offense can can continue what they've been doing all game, and that's just rolling down the field, getting touchdowns. And we will see what they choose to go with. Again, intentions got a little high. Fakaisen in at the back right now, so they're going to give Davin True a breather, and we've seen this a couple times this year. The sophomore, the track kid, has speed, so we'll see where they go. First down and 10. D'Antonio comes in motion across the field, and he'll swing back the other way. Take the snap. Hand off Fakaisen up the middle, bursting all the way through. He's going to fall forward just short of that first down marker. It'll be a nine-yard gain. And once again, Lucas Fakaisen, the spark back, picks up nine. Yeah, you mentioned Fakaisen's had a huge role in this team this year, leading the league, leading the team in return yards. Another great run there, a nine and a half yard run. That's going to be second in inches. Brilliant will come in motion from left to right. Moss going to take the snap. They'll hand off Fakaisen once again getting upfield, and he'll bounce off a couple of tackles. First down and more picked up. And Lucas Fakaisen, the sophomore, moving the chains for the Rams. Fakaisen with two good gains on two solid runs. Fakaisen is shifty. So far, Hingham has been unable to stop the run game of both Fakaisen and Davin True. First down and 10, fresh set of downs for the Rams. D'Antonio in motion. They'll hand it off to him, trying to get to the outside, but the defensive line makes a great play for the Harbourman. That's Cole Pilek that comes up to make the play of the sophomore, and it'll be a loss of yards for the Rams. Yeah, so far these jet sweeps have not been working on Hingham. Hingham has shut down the jet sweep so far this game. I wonder if Marshall's going to continue to try and use it or if they're just going to run it up the gut. It'll be a second down and 12 for the Rams. Moss going to send Summers in motion to the left. They'll take the snap, looking to throw. Moss, plenty of time, but it starts to run out. He has to roll to his right. He's going to throw to Devin. True, wide open. True makes the catch, falling forward close to a first down. We'll see where they spot it, but a huge play for the Rams. True just slipped right off that block and got open. Absolutely, that was a great slip from Davin True. Great poise there from Tormas, able to keep his composure, locate True, dime him up, and that's going to be a 14-yard game. That's going to be third and one. Great play from True and Moss. Mark him short. It'll be a third down and one. But when you have Moss and True in this backfield, one yard pretty much a given, but we'll see. Summers comes in motion. To the right, goes back to the left. They'll take the snap. Moss looking to throw. He fumbled it momentarily. Throw a dime, and that one was caught, and then knocked away. Brilliant had it. Great defensive play by the Harborman. That was number 33, Jabril Johnson, who comes in to punch that ball out. And that was a dime from Moss. That's a drive-saving play right there. Yeah, that's another great play from Moss. Able to keep his composure, keep calm, able to locate Brilliant. Brilliant unable to secure that one. Marshall's going to go for a fourth down because, of course, they are. Let's see what they do here. Fourth down and one. Right now, it could look like a quarterback keeper to the outside, and I think one of the Rams jumped. They did. So it's going to back him up, and what could have been a fourth and one will now be a fourth and six. A mental mistake from the Rams will back him up. I still believe they're going to go for this one, though, even though it is fourth and six, and I was with you on that. I also believe there's going to be a QB draw. I thought yeah. Moss is going to keep that one himself. I mean, when you got, like, what, a 6'4 quarterback over tall, that tour might be, I might be – Cutting him a few inches there, but when you have someone that big, that fast, might as well go for it. But it'll be a fourth down and six now for the Rams. True will line up right behind Tor Moss, who sends Summers in motion to the left. They'll take the snap. Play action. Moss has pressure coming. He's going to throw deep to Brilliant. It's caught. Touchdown. Did he drop it? No, he didn't. Brilliant held on the entire way. Touchdown, Marshfield. A fourth and six. Brilliant second of the day. Tor Moss to Jake Brilliant has been the story of this offense this year. Jake Brilliant already with seven receiving touchdowns on the year, two today, and that's going to make it 31-7 Marshall. Jake Brilliant absolutely rolling at the new wide receiver one position. He has perfectly filled in the shoes of oh, Charlie yeah. Carroll. He has stepped up. We mentioned Nick Couples graduating, Charlie Carroll going down with an injury, and 
Jake Brilliant has had to be the guy to step up massively, and he has. He has been the leading receiver for this team. His yards on the year, he's already got 425 coming into this game. I mean, he's well close to his 500 now. I mean, he has been catching everything deep. We got some movement on the extra point attempt for the Rams. Something I'm going to get worried about is, look at all the booths back there. you got to wonder if one of those kicks just lands right on one of the tables. <laughs> well, you got to have someone ready to catch that one. Offsides against the Harbormen. So now decision for the Rams. Do you go for this one? It's 31-7. to We'll see what the call is. I mean, we've it doesn't hurt to go for it. Yeah, we've seen Aruka do this before off the penalty, but right now it looks like he's going to keep his extra point unit on the field with Drasopoulos. And Brilliant, the touchdown man, getting ready to hold. And another penalty oh my goodness. being thrown. It's a penalty fest right here. And you know what? Aruka hey, says, you know what? They're going to keep jumping off sides. Let's go. Let's go for two. Aruka says, you know what? We're just going to do this. And We're look at everyone right running now. onto the field. They're like, you know what? You want to keep jumping off sides? We're going to make you pay. Go for two. I think Aruka just said, you know what? Enough of this. Let's just go for it. Yeah, and that's something you do not want to see if you're a Hingham. The coaches were really mad calling off all the offensive guys. They were just done with it. They just want to get this over with. Uh, you know what? You don't want us to kick? All right, we'll go for two. I think Aruka was trying to gain Drusopoulos' confidence back. I think that's why they were keeping him out there. But after so many times, when do you, when do you just want to put the offense out yeah, there? Yeah, you got to go for it. True, we're gonna set our mouse gonna set someone in motion, handoff to Antonio, and an easy touchdown where he will just walk in for the two-point conversion. And Marshfield says, you know what's better than one? Two. And they go for it. It's a 30, I think 32. We'll see if that gets updated. It's 32 right now. We think it will be 33 for the Rams. I've I've been confused with the scoreboard early in this game. Right now it will stay at 32. There we go. Yeah, 33. 33, there we go. And Coach Landry. Once again, yelling up to to correct it. Landry always alert on the field, always knows the situation. Of It'll course. It'll be a 33-0 lead for the Rams. All these coaches always on their toes, probably more so than the players, to be honest with oh, you. Yeah. The coaches are always locked and loaded, ready to go. And that's what's so great about the Marshfield program. You have so many coaches so committed to, you know, not only building these players up as, as men and getting them ready for the future, but how committed they are to football and how discipline plays a massive role in this team. That's a huge part to the coaching. You never see Marshfield make a ton of mental mistakes, and they're always ready to play on game day, even on a Saturday. Chrysopolis getting ready to boot this one away. It'll be a big kick. It will land right around the five-yard line. It will be returned by the Harborman getting upfield. But the Rams there to swarm right around that 25-yard line. Harborman offense will take over with 7.25 remaining in the half. And this Hingham offense has kind of woken up a little bit. They were forced to punt last time, but not before driving down the field and getting a touchdown the drive before. So Hingham's offense has shown some light. So let's see if Marshall's defense can get their full momentum back from what they've had over the last week, week and a half. As we've mentioned, when they played Silver Lake, only letting up six points, and that was due to one unfortunate 50-yard rush by Wes Griffin, the senior captain of Silver Lake. Other than that, Marshall's defense did not allow anything from Silver Lake. So they're coming into this game with Total confidence and momentum. Be first down and 10. Barholak in the gun. He'll take the snap. Looking to throw. Screen in the outside to LaCroix. And a great tackle made by the Rams. I think that was Leary who came up to make the play. And will bring up second down. That was that was Luke Leary who's been kind of quiet this game, but not quiet on the year. Leary, one of those players with an interception that we've mentioned earlier. Yep. And he has done a great job filling in for Gio Joseph, who has since left to Milton Academy, filling in for him as the number one cornerback in Marshfield. Yeah, a lot of guys were to step up with Joseph heading over to Milton Academy because Joseph did a lot in the return game. Brilliant has taken that over. And as well, I mean, he has had so many interceptions. He had, I think he tied the record in Marshall for interceptions, returned for a touchdown. And the Rams have stepped up in that department. It'll be second down and four. To the outside, Varholak will throw to Bailey. And a great catch and run. Bongelotti will come up to make the tackle. But a first down picked up for the Harbormen. Yeah, Hingham's offense looks really confident out there. Varholak is one of the more poised quarterbacks we've seen against this Marshall defense compared yeah. to some others in the past. I would argue Varholak has been more composed than Mansfield's quarterback, Shirley Silver Lake's quarterback. This is a t this is a good test for the special defense because this Hingham offense seems to be no joke. 6.20 remaining in the half. 
And the offense of Hingham trying to put together a drive. Varholak in the gun. He'll take the snap. Pressure coming. Screen throw to the outside. It's caught once again. Cutting up field. Molander has to come over to make the tackle. Be a gain of about six and bring up second down for Hingham. Yeah, and Varholak mostly throwing these screen passes, but the screen passes are working. That's going to be another five-yard gain that's going to make it, I believe, second and five. They're going to call it a five-yard gain, second and five. Clock continues to run. We're under six minutes, 5.50 remaining in the half. And Marshall trying to hold up on the defensive end. Second down and five. Our Holak in the gun. He'll take the snap. Pressure coming quickly. He has to throw this one away. And he's got a wide open receiver. LaCroix getting upfield. Beauregard has to push him out of bounds. And another first down picked up for Hingham. There's Varholak able to show that composure again. He's going to give that to his trusty guy, Ryan St. Croix. Hingham's offense looks to be rolling again here towards the end of the second half. We've got five and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Marshall up 33-7. St. Croix done a great job in the backfield thus far. As the Marshall fans looking for this defense to make another huge play. They've only let up seven points, but yardage has gone in favor of Hingham right now. They've gotten some chuck plays, just unable to get in the box for the Harborman. First down and 10, Varholak in the gun. He's gonna send a man in motion to the right. It's his tight end. He'll take the snap. Varholak rolling up to the right. He's got plenty of time. He's gonna throw to the end zone. That one dropped. Hit him right in the chest. It was intended for Chase Bailey. Will fall incomplete. We got a flag in the backfield as well. We assume it's holding against the Harborman. Yeah, and it looks like that's what the call is gonna be. Great coverage there from Jamison Bongelotti. Able to force the incompletion. And that's gonna make it Second down, I believe. We got another new graphic on the scoreboard here. There we go, a little Get Loud scoreboard. Again, shout out to Be Something Special. They allowed me to come and do these games as well, and they run the scoreboard here. So they have done a phenomenal job making the game day experience at Marshfield an enjoyable one as the whole crowd has come out here. We're going to pack James G. Anderson for homecoming weekend. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing better than homecoming weekend and some Marshfield football on a nice Saturday yeah. afternoon. And we'll give you a little uh, insight. Our, my color guy here, Andrew Youngworth, on the homecoming court, so he'll be on the field at halftime doing all the homecoming stuff. But for now, it's first down and 20 with the holding. They'll throw. Marholak has to get this one away. Oh, St. Croix, fall incomplete, bring up second down. And you know, Will, another guy joining me on the court is starting center, Nick Gerrard. There you go. I wonder how that's going to work, if Aruka's going to let him come onto the field or if he'll just get rewarded after the game. I believe that players do come onto the field for home, if I remember correctly. So we'll see how that plays out. I mean, I'll tell you what, Andrew, I didn't get a vote, but you would have gotten mine. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Gotcha. I appreciate that. <laughs> It'll be a second down and 20. Coming up for the Harbormen, again, beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Marshfield, Massachusetts. Barholak in the gun, he's got St. Croix behind him. He'll take the snap, play action. He'll look to throw. Plenty of time in the pocket. Throw deep over the middle. That ball dropped once again. Marshfield coverage there on the play. It'll be third down. Yeah, Varholak had all the time in the world. This Hingham O-line has done a great job blocking for him. Luke Leary able to shut down that pass, able to force the incompletion. Phenomenal play there by Luke Leary. And with 5.17 remaining, the Harbormen have dug themselves in a hole with this holding call. It will continue to be third down and 20, and no yardage gain on the pass. Two downs. Beauregard will come in. Burho will come out, so they'll get an extra D back into the game. I mean... You, surely you have to even go for it, even if you don't pick up a ton of yards here. 30, I mean, you're down 33-7. to seven. Anderson Dalton calling it third down and a mile on the PA. And a timeout will be called. So at 5.17, we're going to take a break here on MCM. We'll be right back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions, Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility.
And we are back here at James G. Anderson Field. Rams 33 to seven lead. It's a third down and 20 for the Harbormen. Varhola gonna take the snap. Pressure coming, has to step up in the pocket. He's gonna throw, and that ball's picked off. Jamison Bonjolani on the return, and he has speed to get upfield, but they will wrap him up right there. A huge turnover for the Rams, and the offense will take over. And Bonjolani is going to join Will Devine as one of two Marshfield Rams with multiple interceptions on the year. And he is about to put on the turnover chain around his neck. Marshfield able to take control of field position at around the 20 yard line. And that was huge pressure from Charlie Leach, the linebacker coming up to hit Varholak as he's throwing that ball. Force is a bad ball and Bonjolotti does the rest. A massive turnover for the Rams. That's something Charlie Leach has been good at doing all year, forcing the pass, forcing the incompletion, forcing the interception. Charlie Leach has been a dog so far this year for Marshfield. And the Marshfield offense will get ready to take the field. Once again, they got plenty of time. They got five minutes to go and push this one all the way down the field and take an even bigger lead. So we'll see what they do here. Moss with three receivers to his right. True on his left. He'll send D'Antonio in motion back and forth. Moss will take the snap. He'll look to throw plenty of time. He has to step up in the pocket. Throw, and that ball is caught. Huge catch by Summers will only be for about a yard gain and bring up second down. Yeah, that's pinpoint accuracy there from Moss. Put it right in the breadbasket of Summers. Able to get a couple yards here. Marshall's going to look to push the ball up further. It's going to be second and eight for Marshall. Going through all his reads as well. So good job by the senior quarterback. It'll be second down and eight. Brilliant goes in motion. Moss going to take the snap. They'll throw to the outside. Richardson cannot make the catch. It will be third down coming up for the Rams and punt unit getting ready. Yeah, that looked like an awkward snap right there. Awkward though. There looked to be a little bit of miscommunication on all ends of that Marshfield yeah. offense right there. That play was just kind of, kind of awkward there on all ends. So huge third down coming up for the Rams. They would love to convert this one. Keep the drive going. Moss in the gun. He's going to send Brilliant back and forth in motion and a jump from the defensive line of the Harbin will make it closer for the Rams. That is huge for Marshall right there. It's going to make it from third and eight to third and three. So that is huge for Marshall here as they now only have to gain three yards. Both teams have kind of had some false start offside penalties yep. that have been kind of, kind of unneeded. Yeah, no, 100%. It's been a lot going into this game. D'Antonio going to come in motion from left to right. And Marshfield jumped this time, so we'll back it right back up. Another flag, this time false start. So now the ball's going to get brought right back, and that's another unnecessary penalty from Marshfield. This is the most false start penalties I've, I've seen from the Rams this year. I mean, you know, we mentioned right tackle Aiden Nicholson down right now with a concussion. So they've had to bring in Gerard to play center, and Bonjolotti, who is usually the center, has moved over. So maybe some miscommunication going in that direction. So it will once again be a third and long for the Rams, third and about eight. Moss will take the snap. He's got time. He'll throw. He's got an open receiver. Summer's wide open, and he will have enough for a first down for the Rams. That's exactly what you want to see from junior tight end Aiden Summers, making his appearance well-known here in this game. And I think I agree with you that the O-line is kind of still getting used to their new positions here in this game as many of them have been switched around and replaced. So a lot of changes here for this O-line, but they've been going through that all year. Rams will bring up an extra tight end in Chesbro. They'll go in motion, hand off to True. True getting to the outside. He's got plenty of space. Devin True gets knocked down, but not before a huge gain for the Rams. Enough for a first down, and he will move the chains. Yeah, but despite the flip in midair, Davin True yeah, able to gain yeah. another 10 yards. First, Davin True yeah. has been rolling all game. I think he has around seven or eight rushes, gaining at least 10 on every single run. Davin True has been pushing this ball downfield all game. And he has been huge for the Rams offense, the senior captain. Tight end Summers goes in motion to the right. Rams will take the snap play action. Moss looking to throw. He's looking deep for Brilliant. Who oh, it hit him in the hands. Almost made the catch. Will fall incomplete. Bring up second down. And that was a dime from Tor Moss. Just unable to reel it in. That throw was absolutely insane. My hands are on my head right now. Moss was rolling to his left when he threw that. He was off balance. He had to throw it over a defender into Brilliant's hands. He places it perfectly. Brilliant unable to secure it. Great throw from Tor Moss. It's going to make it second down. And I don't think it's going to be very long before we see another launch to Jake Brilliant once oh, again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Marshfield has loved that deep shot to Brilliant all year. It's been successful. 
and he'll come in motion to the right. Moss with True to his left. He'll take the snap. Hand off to True up the middle. True going off of his blockers, falling forward. We'll get a decent gain. Maybe about four will bring up third down for the Rams. That was probably the, probably the first time we've seen True not gain too many yards on a run there. Yep. Still a four-yard gain. It's going to make it third and six. This is definitely go for it territory at this point. They're far enough in Aruka's mind where they believe they can go for it. 3.20 remaining on in the game clock here in the first half. It'll be a third down and about seven for the Rams. Brilliant back and forth in motion. He'll take the snap. Moss looking to throw, going deep. Once again, Richardson caught, and he'll go all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Marshfield. Luke Richardson off a massive deep ball from Tor Moss. The Rams punch another one in. So we were correct that Moss was going to gun it out shortly, but we were not aware that it was going to be to the sophomore, Luke Richardson, who has been pretty quiet in this game until now with that long 55-yard touchdown. That's going to make it 39-7, to Marshall. Luke Richardson has had a bunch of huge plays this year. I believe that's his third touchdown on the year. Luke Richardson making a huge effect early. Yeah, Richardson came in 150 yards on the year. He's been a reliable young receiver. It's still very young. He's got a lot of time to continue to be great for this Rams offense. Third touchdown of the year, and he just gets wide open on a little post downfield. And Tor Moss has been automatic right now with his arm. I Brilliant hold. Drosopoulos' kick through the uprights and good, so his confidence is back. Marshfield continues to pour it on. 40 to seven is your score with 3.02 remaining in the half. And I couldn't agree more about what you said about Tormas. This has by far been Tormas's best game in terms of getting yards through the air so far this season. I believe that's already been his third passing touchdown of this game. It is. And multiple of those touchdowns have been from airing it out beyond their side of the field. Oh, yeah. So Tormas showing that his gun of an arm can reach far lengths. Yeah, Tor, been one of, I mean, statistically he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the history of Marshall. He broke the record for yards last year as a junior, and he continues his dominance. Coming to this game, he has 850 passing yards, 266 rushing yards, and 12 total touchdowns. So he has been a weapon for this Rams team. He continues to be dominant, and the Rams continue to dominate in this game on both sides, 40-7. to Drisopoulos getting ready to kick this one back off, and it will be deep, but it will be returned. Trying to get upfield are the Harbormen breaking tackles and almost got a huge breakaway, but the Rams will wrap yeah, him up. Finn O'Brien on the return, Fikaisen. and Fakaisen, the running back, comes in to make the tackle for the Rams. Hey, man, Fakaisen can do it all. This Marshall defense coming out, looking to keep out the momentum from Jamison Bongelotti's interception, able to throw on the turnover chain. So Marshall expecting to continue to roll on defense. Despite letting up that one touchdown, they've been pretty good locking up Hingham's offense. Hingham's offense, despite the score, has not played too shabby here at James D. Anderson. They've been pushing it down the field a couple of times this game. And the Harborman offense back on the field. It's Varholak. And a timeout will be taken. So we're going to take a quick break here on MCM. 255 remaining. Rams lead 40-7. to Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions, Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility. Welcome back to James G. Anderson High School, uh, Field, excuse me, at Marshfield High School. Misspoke my words a little bit. It will be a first down <laughs> and 10 coming up 
for the Hardman. Varholak in the gun. He'll take the snap. He's got time. Looking to throw. Pressure coming. And he's going to have to step up. Ekstrom and another Ram come up to make the tackle. Drisopoulos, the kicker, the other one to come up. It'll be a coverage sack for the Rams bring up second down. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen Drisopoulos on defense here from Marshfield today as he normally likes to play safety. Right now they have him as more of a linebacker, I believe. They're, the defense on the sideline calling for Andrew Cosman to check into the game. Yeah, get him ready to go. They're probably going to need him in a minute to bring that pressure. Right now it's a three down lineman set. Stevens, Burrow, and Ekstrom on that defensive line for the Rams. It'll and be a second down and 10. Barholak in the gun. He's looking to throw to the outside. That one will fall incomplete. It'll be second down. Or third so, down, excuse me. Drosopoulos, who normally plays safety, is currently playing defensive back as they have Ryan Bergameska and Phoenix Beauregard at the safety positions. And as Andrew Cosman checks in for Jake Ekstrom, that is one more junior on this defense. Take a look at this defense right here. Wow. It's all seniors and juniors, but it's mostly juniors. You got Phoenix, Beauregard, Ryan Bergameska, Charlie Leach, Nick Trisopoulos, Andrew Cosman, Dylan Burho. I think that's seven, seven juniors on this defense yeah, right now. If you're looking for what the defense of the Rams will look like in 2025, I mean, just look at the screen right now. It'll be third down and long. Varholak trying to throw a screen to the outside. That ball is tipped up. Chance for an interception, but it will fall incomplete, and it will bring up fourth down for the Harbormen. Yeah, Leary was focusing on his man right there. If he was looking at the quarterback, he would have been able to intercept that. Maybe take that to the house. That would have been close. But Hingham is going to still punt here, and Jake Brillen's going to look to get a nice return to end off the half. Marshall could still put up more points before halftime. I think I'm going to I'm going to try and call my shot here. Brillian has yet to have a real pop of a return. He hasn't had a chance. If he gets a clean punt here, we'll see if. He can make something happen. He's been dynamic in the past game. Snap is good. They will punt this one away, and it will fall deep to Brilliant, and he's just going to have to let this one go. It will roll over his head, and actually really good punt landing inside the 10. will settle around the 7-yard line, and with a minute 52 remaining, the Rams will try and put together a 2-minute drive from their own 7. Yeah, that's a phenomenal punt there from Hingham. Marshall is going to try to have to go 93 yards in just a minute and 52 seconds here in the second quarter. Marshall is going to try to put up an, a near 50-piece in the first half alone, which is already more than last year. As we mentioned, I believe it was 33 to 6 at halftime last year. Uh, we have a radio. It was 36 to 6. It was 36 so they've to already six, crossed that. Me. They've already crossed that by four. They could cross that by double digits with a touchdown here. Let's see if this offense chooses to try to drive down the field or just chew up the clock. And Rollinson wanted to go in for just a moment. 16 had his hat on, but they're going to stick with Tor Moss for right now. Probably finish up this half, and then we'll see the young quarterback, the young sophomore. Maybe take the reins in the second half. But for now, it's Tor Moss. I believe he's got Fakaisen in there to his right. He'll send Summers in motion. Moss going to take the snap, throw to the outside. That ball is caught by Brilliant. Unable to get out of bounds and a big hit, and Brilliant actually couldn't survive through that catch. It will fall incomplete, bring up second down. Yeah, that's a huge hit from number eight, Hudson Treza. Huge hit, able to force the, I believe they're going to call that incomplete, so that's going to be second and ten. That could have been possibly ruled a fumble and rolled out of bounds. That would have been a loss of yardage. So that's great coverage there from Hudson oh, Treza. Chesman going to come back in. D'Antonio will come out. So a two tight end set for the Rams. Fakaisen still in the backfield. And they like this one two punch at the running back position. True. Going to get a breather for right now. Fakaisen will line up behind Tor Moss. He will send Summers in motion to the right. Moss takes the snap. Hand off Fakaisen up the middle, and the defensive line will meet him right there. No gain on the play. We'll bring up third down and 10. So yeah, so right now it looks like Marshall's just going to try to chew this clock out to enter the half up 40 to 7. Assuming they get a good punt off. Let's see what Marshall does here on third and 10. Huge third down coming up for the Rams. D'Antonio will replace Chesman coming back into the game. When another speedy young guy for the Rams who has been a huge part of this offense stepping up for Charlie Carroll with the injury. Down to a minute 15 and ticking. On a huge third down and 10 for the Rams. Moss going to send D'Antonio in motion from left to right. Now back the other way. Moss going to take the snap. He'll hand off up the middle for Kaizen, fighting for extra yards. He won't have enough for Oh, he will have enough for a first down. So a third and 10. Maybe just trying to get some room for a punt. Fakaisen takes it for 10 yards. And this might change the strategy for the Rams. You try and push the ball further downfield. 
I mean, what a run there from Lucas Pekaisen. From the looks of it, it looks like they're still, actually, they might try to throw this one out. They got D'Antonio and Brilliant to Moss's right and Luke Richardson to his left. Time continues to run. Moss going to take the snap. He'll hand off Fakaisen once again getting up the middle. And Rams now will just look to run down this clock. Gain of a couple bring up second down. Gain of four is second and six. Yeah, so it looks like they are going to run out this clock to the half. And the play clock is longer than the game clock, so they do not have to run another play. Let's see if they do so anyway. But we're now 20 seconds left, 25 on the play clock. So Marshfield looked like they might just let the clock run out as the sideline starts to head over to the high school and they do so that's going to be the half so that will do it for the first half here something to know will divine getting looked at right now he got hurt earlier in the game he stayed in so we'll keep you updated on that but for right now first half action 40 to 7 marshfield has the lead it has been a dominant first half for the rams and don't go anywhere we will be right back with second half coverage we will see you back here rams massive lead in the first half MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions. Repel Pest Solutions is a full-service pest control company protecting residential and commercial properties from nuisance pests that carry germs and diseases. They are a small, family-run business from Marshfield, licensed, insured, competitively priced. We work to understand your needs and offer an integrated pest solution that's environmentally friendly. Don't be afraid to bug us. Moi Health & Wellness. Moi Health & Wellness is owned and operated by nurse practitioner Christine Murphy. We are an integrative wellness center offering medical weight loss, men's testosterone therapy, functional medicine consults and labs, vitamin therapy, Advatex laser skin resurfacing, Botox and dye sport, teeth whitening, and so much more. Moi Health & Wellness has three locations in Lakeville, Marshfield, and Plymouth. And Road to Responsibility. Founded in 1988, Road to Responsibility's mission is to provide the means, the opportunity, and the support necessary to allow citizens with disabilities to take their place as productive members of the community. We are committed to providing all individuals with opportunities to truly live in the community. Through our services, we are proud to enrich and improve the lives of every individual, one person at a time. Welcome back to James G. Anderson Field Rams getting off the field with that injury. It was Liam Riley, so correction on that. Looks like he was cramping up a little bit. So he will go to the sideline and get looked at. For now, it will be a third down and four for the Hardman. They'll take the snap, hand off to Bailey on the jet sweep, getting to the outside. Plenty of yardage for a first down, and Hangham will move the chains. Yeah, Bailey's quick right there. They were able to catch Marshall kind of off guard there. They ran that play super, super quickly. They wasted no time getting the snap off. I mean, you can see how much Liam Riley means to this team. He's on the bench right now, and you know, all, all the guys coming over. Richardson just came over. Got Bongelotti over there making sure he's okay. A young guy, and he's going to be a big part of this team going forward. So definitely a kid that they want to make sure is all good. Be first down and 10 for the Harbormen. Barholak in the gun. He'll take the snap, hand off to St. Croix, getting up the middle in that defensive line there to make the stop. Decent gain for Hingham, bring up second down. Yeah, Marshall's defense trying not to let up totally. The Hingham is just again, the about at the Marshall oh, 41. Hingham has done this a couple times. They threw the interception earlier. They had a turnover on downs earlier. Hingham not totally able to convert, but this is not the second time that they've been on Marshall's side of the field. You're looking at the scoreboard, you may think that, but Hingham has had a couple of really good productive drives. It'll be a second down and six. Yeah, the Hardman have put up a bunch of yards, just have been able to convert it into points. Tight end will go in motion to the right, or Holak will take the snap, pitch it to St. Croix on the outside of falling forward. Close to that first down marker, I think his knee was down short. We'll bring up third down. We'll see, see who the spot the is here. Talking 12. about it, so they are gonna move the chance. He did oh, get the first down. And Hingham, once again, continue with the chains on their opening drive. Yeah, that's another fantastic run from St. Croix. This kid is able to shift around Marshall's defense. He has not been able to do much today, but he is finally able to break through a little bit because he is a senior captain running back. He knows what he's doing. Marshall's so used to this running back competition that they've started to slow the running backs down. But that run right there from St. Croix gives Hingham the first down. 7-4 remaining in the third quarter action. Rams. Lead by a lot, they'll take the snap, hand off to the outside, and that one immediately shut down. Charlie Leach comes up from the linebacker Charlie position Leach to make the play, be a tackle for loss, it'll be second down, and even Anderson Dalton thinks it's amazing. 
the jet sweep that has proved effective mostly of today's game did not fool Charlie Leach of the Rams that time. That was a loss of five. That's going to make it second and 15 for Hingham on the Marshall 40-yard line. Great read there by Charlie Leach. He's been so good at this all year. Great job by Leach. A lot of the starter guys still in for the Rams right now. I mean, you saw Riley come in on the secondary. They brought Leary back in. And Bergameska in at the corner as well. Second down and 15. Bailey comes in motion. They'll take the snap. Barholak rolling to the outside. He's going to throw and just chuck this ball out of bounds. Will fall incomplete. We have another Hingham guy down who will bounce right back up. Pass ball incomplete will be third down, 651 remaining in the third. And I felt like this has been the story all game. Hingham gets a lot of good drives going. They get the push and they get these drives. They've gotten a lot of yards, but one or two mistakes and they end up in a situation like this where it's third and 15 and it's hard to make up that kind of ground. You said it perfectly. I mean, whether it's a goofy penalty or whether it's one bad play, it sets them up for to be just out of field goal range, but just out of punting range. They're just in terrible positions every time once they drive down this field. So you gotta wonder if Hingham's gonna try to run, gain some yardage, or if they're just gonna try to go for the first down right now. Because with a score of 40 to seven, you don't have too much to lose, as we are gonna get a timeout right here. Yeah, Hingham's not a cakewalk of a team either. They're four and one on the year, so they're a better team in the South Shore. Just unable to really string together some points. Not their day so far. 40 to seven, your score. We got a timeout, so we're gonna take a quick break here on MCM. We'll be right back, don't go anywhere. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions, Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility. Third down and 15 for the Harbor We are back here at Marshall High. Third down and 15 coming up for the Harborman. Varholak will go empty set. Two receivers to the left, the tight end there as well. Two to the right. Blitz coming for the Rams. Varholak has to roll all the way up to the right. Pressure coming. They can't get him on the ground. Varholak, a lot of green grass, but he will finally be wrapped up by the defensive line of Marshfield. Another sack, and it will bring up fourth down. Yeah, he was able to avoid the sack the first two or three hits, but Dylan Burrow able to get him down once, once the third hit got to him. So that's going to bring out Hingham's punt team. Marshfield's offense is going to get the ball back. And Tor Moss, the now record holder in Marshall touchdowns, is going to get an opportunity to add more to his record. Keep extending that lead. It'll be a fourth down, and Hingham has no choice but to pump this one away. It's a fourth down and 17, I believe. So no real choice in this one. Jack Stevens will come back on. And they're ready to pump this one away. Snap is good, and they will boot this one deep. And Rams are just going to get away from it, let it roll down inside the 10-yard line. Well, this is going to be Nate Rawlinson out there, there instead of Tor Moss. Tor Moss is out for the rest of this game, so they're going to give Moss a break. Moss able to break the record today. Huge shout-out to Tor Moss, now the new Marshfield High School record leader in passing touchdowns. But now it's going to be the youngin' sophomore Nate Rawlinson in his second straight week gets a second straight appearance. Let's see what him and this Marshfield offense can do. Now it'll be interesting to see what the young guy can do. Fakaisen probably getting ready here as well. A lot of the young Rams probably getting ready to check in to this game. And quick update on Liam Riley. He's got shoulder pads off right now, so he is most likely done for the rest of the game. Sophomore number 16, Nate And Rawlinson it's announced on the PA. The Rawlinson, the sophomore QB. Got to put together quite a drive. He's got quite a ways to go. Backed up all the way in, and Fakaisen will be the man in the backfield as well. So you were right about Fakaisen being the, another sophomore skill position player in the backfield there. Rawlinson gonna take the snap, handoff to Fakaisen going up the middle! Fakaisen almost broke it loose. 
one tackle to beat and he would have the whole sideline with his speed. Who knows how far that could have gone. It will go for nine and bring up second down for the Rams. Yeah, that had potential to be a year-long play for Marshall's offense, but for Kaizen, able to give Marshall a little bit of breathing room here on second and three. Let's see if Rollinson airs it out. Rollinson in the gun. He's got Fakaisen to his right, three receivers to his right as well. We got Cole Hannigan in the game, another sophomore, number 20. Rollinson going to take the snap, hand off Fakaisen up the middle, who lost the ball, and it will go the other way. So Hingham is going to get it off of a Fakaisen fumble, and the defense for the Rams has to take the field once again. You know, that's going to happen. The, when the sophomore offense is out there, it's going to take him a while to get used to it. Being a varsity football player in Marshfield is nothing easy, no matter who you're playing against. Hingham able to show Marshfield that they still mean business regardless of the score. Able to force the fumble, get the ball back, and now they're just like that in not only the red zone, but they're in a first and goal opportunity on the seven-yard line. Yeah, that's a huge turnover for the Harvard. They're going to try and punch this one in. Only one touchdown on the day. This will be Varholak. He's got St. Croix behind him. He'll take the snap, hand off St. Croix, getting to the outside, and he has speed, but the Rams will close in, make the tackle, bring up second down. And something else worthy to make note of is I think we've got more sophomores out there for the Marshfield Rams defense. we got Chris Johnson out there. We've got Will Scott out there. I think Connor Scott is out there as well. we got... Sophomore Kyle Casale out there. We have a whole bunch wow. of younger defensive guys out there. Number 23, that's Ryan Madeira. So this Marshall defense is now studded with these sophomores. Yeah, pretty much the JV unit in right now for the Rams. Gonna hand off St. Croix, trying to get up field in a big hit by that secondary of Marshfield. Huge hit, St. Croix can't get anywhere. Drasopoulos comes up to make the hit and will bring up third and goal. Yeah, absolutely, even this even this younger D-line is still no joke. There's nothing to be messed around with. This is, you guys are currently looking at what could be the future varsity de defense. Oh yeah. If you're looking for what the Rams will look like going forward, I mean, plug and play these guys in with the juniors that we saw on that defensive unit a little bit earlier. Play clock winding down for Hingham. They gotta go quick. It's only 10 left on the clock. And they will break the huddle on a third and goal. Varholak, they got to go quick, and yeah, they know it now too. Man goes in motion. Varholak going to take the snap, play action. He's looking to throw, pressure oh. coming. Varholak gets out of it, and he makes another move, throwing to the end zone, and that one is a caught, I believe, for a touchdown. What a play by Varholak, breaking the sacks, getting outside, juking everyone out, and he will throw a touchdown pass. A great play by the junior quarterback. Yeah, junior Alex Herbert unable to make the sack there. Great play by Hingham there, able to get the touchdown. Um, Varholak able to break loose of the sack, get a touchdown, and now Hingham has cut this lead to 27. So we are far away from a running clock here at James G. Anderson. And that's the <laughs> biggest thing right now. 42-13, your score. An extra point unit on for the Harbormen. This is Henry Sellers. Snap and hold, both good. He will kick this one through the uprights. It'll be good. And with 3.37 remaining, Harbormen make it a 40 to 14 league. And I mean, at this point, they're just trying to stay in the game for as long as they can, it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. For Marshfield, I wonder if they're gonna stick with Rollinson in this younger offense, or if they're gonna maybe throw in the starters for a little bit more to add on that cushion. Rollinson still has the football in his hands with his full uniform on, so it looks like Rollinson is still going to head back out onto that field. You gotta wonder how Marshall plays this, though, if they wanna keep running with Fikaisen or if they wanna give Rollinson a couple of passes. I gotta think that Torres probably done for the day would be- That's what I would imagine, Would too. be my guess. I don't think they'll put him back in so it'll probably be Rollinson the rest of the way through. But I think Fakaisen is trading off drives with True right now is my guess because he is wearing the uh, the signal cap on the sideline right now, just as True was when he was in on offense. It'll be interesting to see. I think that they told the, the kickoff the return seven. for the Rams Luke that potential for a onside kick is very high. Yeah, look at this. They cut everyone except... Who is that back there? True? It's True and Fakaisen. True and Fakaisen. Okay, so there's another, another number seven. Excuse me on that. There's two number sevens. 
And they will just squib this one out. D'Antonio just gonna, oh, I thought he fair caught it. Wait, he fair caught it. How is this still going? D'Antonio going to the outside and he's got tons of space. D'Antonio to the 20, the 10, all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, yeah, Marshfield. I gotta be honest with you, Will. Catch. I gotta be honest with you, Will. I'm really confused at what has just happened. I was also assuming that the fair catch was called by D'Antonio. But regardless of that, what a great run from D'Antonio. Yep. He started off on the right side of the field towards us, able to make his way all the way to the left side laterally, and then able to run straight down the sideline into the touchdown. And just like that, the lead is back up to 37. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a pro Marshall guy all the way to the end. You know, grew up here, always going to be pro Marshall on this broadcast. But I thought for sure he fair caught that ball. I guess official didn't see a signal. And Dan Tony, I mean, credit to him. He just kept running. Play doesn't stop till the whistle's blown. Yeah, and that's gonna that's another great play for him to add on to the stat sheet. Oh, around 70 yard kick return touchdown. Was that the first kick return touchdown of the year? It was. I believe that was, yeah. right? We've had a couple punt returns, but this was the kick return touchdown. So Dan Tonio getting in the first kick return touchdown of the year for the Marshfield Rams. You love to see that. Big as Gio Joseph was a professional exactly. at this last year. Yeah, Charlie Carroll had his fair share of his <laughs> as well. Jake D'Antonio able to add on to that list. And D'Antonio has had to step into that role as brilliant with a good hold. Drosopoulos with a great kick through the uprights and good. So we'll up the lead to 48 to 14 for the Rams and blink and you miss it. Yeah, honestly, it's Oh, the, a couple of these drives have happened very quickly. You've had the uh, both of them have happened to D'Antonio. Moss aired it out to D'Antonio for the touchdown. D'Antonio had a kick return for a touchdown. D'Antonio getting this offense off quickly. Getting unfortunately the defense is probably not a too big a fan of that. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy to see D'Antonio probably has close to I mean, hundred something total yards as. Quick MCM shout out on the, the scoreboard. We love that. Yeah, huge shout out to whoever is whoever's on the scoreboard right now shouting out MCM. And if you're watching this, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we appreciate you guys being here. Of course. We got a, I mean, it's it's hard to ignore that we got a lot of traction on social media this week. So hopefully we got people flocking into the broadcast, watching the Rams put up a dominant performance. We got a new kicker. That's Rome Stan Cavish, the senior. Go. So he's been punting for this team, but with Drosopoulos playing more in the secondary right now in the blowout, want to bring in Stan Cavish, and he will get ready to kick this one away for the Rams, who lead 48, 14, 323 remaining in the third quarter, that is. Good kick from Ron Stan Cavish. He'll be fielded deep. This is O'Brien trying to make a return, getting to the outside, breaks one tackle, and the Rams will finally wrap him up. And the oh, offense for the Harmon going to try and make something happen with 3.15 remaining. Yeah, that's another missed tackle there from Alex Herbert. Hingham's going to set up just shy of the 30-yard line. Let's see if Marshall's defense can get Hingham off the field quickly and put this offense right back out there. Or excuse me, not even right back out there. Marshall's offense hasn't gone out in quite a while. Let's Has see if they can get Marshall's offense on since the turnover. Exactly. Marshall hasn't been on since they fumbled that ball away. Only a couple plays. Drosopoulos will be taken out. And another new face entering, entering, excuse me. I don't even have a 35 on my roster, so we will try and get word of who that is. Yeah, we'll find out who 35 is, assuming he makes a play. Rohlock gonna take the snap, roll out to the right throw, and he's got a receiver upfield for a first down and more. And Hingham will move the chains. Yeah, that was a good tackle there from Chris Johnson. Hang him able to move the chains. Marshall's defense, let's see if they can kind of regroup themselves together because remember, this is a whole new defensive lineup out here right now against Hingham's starting varsity offense. So this could be a great look for Marshall's defense if they can get some stops here. Yeah, I got new guys in there. You got Herbert. You got Will Scott, as you mentioned, a bunch of new guys. You got both of the Scots. You got Connor Scott in there at the yep. D end. You got Will Scott in there. They're going to hand off up the middle, St. Croix, and he's going to fall forward for a big gain on the first down. Getting about six, be second and four. St. Croix with the one tackle. Yeah, St. Croix him. starting to have his way a little bit with this Marshall defense. Every run he's got is six, seven yards. Occasionally he's got to let's get to ten piece in there. Marshall just got to find a way to stop it. Yeah, it is a, a JV unit for the Rams who are trying to step up to the task of taking on the varsity guys. 2.40 remaining in the third. They're going to take the snap handoff. St. Croix once again, and he is stopped short of that first down, I believe. We'll see what they choose to do with the chains. 
You are right here. They're going to mark it third and inches. So let's see if Marshfield is going to be able to stop this play right here, which I would assume is a rushing play, but they got to be aware for that play action wide receiver screen because they like to run that a lot too. So correction on the score. We have, is that 47 to 14 it is. right now? So 47 to 14. I think I said 48. A lot of confusion on the scoreboard. Close enough. Yeah, we're close enough. Marshfield's winning by a lot. That's that's what we know. Third and inches for the Harbormen. Varhola going to take the snap handoff. St. Croix up the middle. Got stopped initially, but he's breaking it to the right outside. Plenty of yardage up in front, and he's finally wrapped down, but he's got plenty of yards for a first down. I believe it was Purcell Patrick on the tackle. Yeah, that was Padraig Purcell on the tackle there. Um, I think what's important here for Marshall is they have to adjust to Hingham's O-line because, yes, yeah, St. Croix is a problem. He's a very good running back, but this Hingham O-line is no joke. They had their way with Marshfield's varsity D-line a couple of times. So this, um, these backups kind of got to get used to this Hingham O-line because they're, they're strong. It's first down and 10, Varholak going to take the snap, play action, and he's looking to throw. Air it out deep. That ball almost picked off a dropped interception, and that was Ryan Medeiros, a chance to pick it off and head the other way. What a play that would have been, but it falls incomplete, second down. Yeah, that would have been awesome to see from one of these underclassmen. Let's hope he doesn't get too much in his head about that one because sometimes the underclassmen overreact to some of these plays. So let's hope that doesn't have too much a big effect on him. Justin Amaral just checked in for Duncan Eagleson. Duncan Eagleson is another junior who is starting to get some good varsity time as yeah. the Rams play these Patriot League games. Yeah, definitely want to develop you know, your more young and experienced players in these games like that where the Rams have de I mean, just dominated the Patriot League. Varholak breaking away from pressure, cutting it upfield, running away, throws that one out of bounds, and Coach Aruka wants a grounding, and I think he might have a case on it too. Yeah, I was also pretty sure that was going to be intentional grunting. But at the same time, I was also pretty sure that D'Antonio called for a fair catch. Yeah. So I guess that's a little uh, little payback call. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Yeah, fine by me. Third down and 10. And the Harbormen, I mean, trying to get anything going on offense right now. Again, they have a lot of yardage, just have not turned it into points. Only one touchdown. On the day, Varholak in the gun, back behind him. He'll take the snap, play action. He's looking to throw to the outside of that ball. Is tipped off, will fall incomplete off of his receiver's fingertips. And with a minute seven left, it will be a fourth down for Hingham. Marshfield's defense doing exactly what they wanted to do. Forced three straight plays of no yardage gained. Fourth and 10, Hingham does look like they're gonna go for it. Let's see if Marshfield's defense can really prove their worth here on this field and get a turnover on downs to get this offense back out there. It'll be a fourth down, and offense will stay out because, I mean, I, you got to go for this one at this point. They have a new back. That's Jack Stocks, the senior, in in the backfield. But it's fourth down and ten, even set receivers. Barholak has pressure coming. He has to step up, and he's going to throw this one up. Knocked away. Incomplete. And it will be a turnover on down for Marshfield. Get a look at that. I think that was number 18, Brian Coveno, on the coverage. Yeah, that's junior Brian Covino with the stop there. Huge play there. Able to get a turnover on down to this Marshfield offense. Marshfield's defense did exactly what they were supposed to do there. They did their job perfectly. I mean, what a stand by the JV unit, holding them to four, <laughs> four plays with 10 yardage to go. And they just held up the entire way. A bunch of young guys getting it done for the Rams. Minute two remaining in the third. And Rollinson will stay out there at quarterback right now, but... Couple more skilled positions in. Fakaisen will stay in. I think Summers in there as well. I actually don't see him quite yet. Number 20, Cole Hannigan in as well. Hannigan goes in motion back and forth. Rollinson gonna take the snap. Read option, he's gonna run it himself. Rollinson trying to get upfield and he will fall forward. Decent gain on the quarterback. Keeper, second down coming up. And Rollinson, much like Moss, is quite the mobile quarterback with a strong arm. He has a pretty similar build to Moss. If you look at him, he's much taller than any other anybody else on that field right now. Yeah. Rollinson got some height, and he's able to run. I mean, Marshall has had an insane run with quarterbacks. They've gone oh my from, goodness, yes. what, Jack Masterson. I think they're in, in between it was Jackson Finney for a little bit. A lot of different matchups, and you go all the way. Go back to Owen Masterson, yep. then Molander, and now Tor Moss, as this one will be 
a false start. But Marshall has been on an insane run of having phenomenal quarterbacks back there. Absolutely. There's just that one quarterback in every class or every other class that's just a hidden gem. Or maybe not even a hidden gem. That's just a gem yeah. that Marshall gets to see and get to use for maybe multiple years. Now, there's been a ton of great quarterbacks who have come through Marshfield. And Tormas, one of the best in the business of it right now, arguably probably the best guy to play quarterback for the Rams, suit up. And time will just wind down here. Rollins did not get a snap. And we'll see if Roland Sidwin Tour graduates next year. This will be a good look on what he will look like in the future. So that will do it for third quarter of action. Rams lead 47 to 14. And we will be back after this one. MCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions, Moi Health and Wellness, and Road to Responsibility. Hopefully, no copyright there, but shout out to the Marchfield band. First time I've ever heard that one from the band. <laughs> Another false start by the Rams, and Aruka is going to start losing it here. I and know it's a young unit, but. That's what happens when the young unit's out there, but they got to learn one way or another because eventually these are going to be the guys that have to get it done here from yep. Marshfield. And you look over down. to this, the snack shack over there, you look at all the plaques, you look at the five years for Marshfield football, the five time champions. This program means a lot. 100%, it will be second down and 14 now for the Rams. Rollinson going to hand this one off for Kaizen. Rollinson, excuse me. I'll get I'll get that one down the oh, more we see it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get so that. We got Rollinson for Kaizen. I really want to see Rollinson air one out here. I really want to give I really want the coaches to give Nate Rollinson a shot here. I want to get a look at him, too, because he's going to be the next guy. I mean, unless there's some crazy freshman that, that comes up and is going to take that job. I mean, or even a freshman for that matter. But for right now, he is the guy for the Rams next year. Tormasa Sr. will be graduated. They're going to need a new guy to step up. And it'll be interesting to see what the Rams offense will look like going forward. Rollinson, hard count, and he dropped the ball. He's going to have to fall on it. Still loose, and I think the Rams able to fall on that one. So a disappointing drive for the Rams. going to be fourth down in a country mile, and they're probably going to have to put this one away. Yeah, it's just more of Marshfield's young guys still feeling the pressure of being out in the varsity field, especially during homecoming game. They are going to take the offense off. Probably they actually have to settle in eventually because this happened last up. week. Yeah. They're able to figure themselves out eventually. Okay. But is this the first down punt down the Rams, Rams have had today? This is the first punt. So this so is this just is exactly like last what it was year. Last year, Marshfield punted the ball once all year, or once all game, excuse me, versus Hingham last year. Stan Cavish. The Brian punter for Marshfield, for back to kick, O'Brien back deep, Stan Cavish gets a good snap, and he will punt this one away, chance for O'Brien to return it, but he will just let it roll all the way past the 35 yard line, it will settle down at around the 33 in the Hartman offense, with a minute and five running, we got a running clock here, they're going to try and take the field, see if they can get anything done, they got stopped by this JV unit of the Rams last time around. Yeah, the Rams JV unit gave up a couple first downs, but once they got on Marshfield's side of the ball, Marshfield's side of the field, excuse me, it was just like it has been all game and they weren't able to convert once they got to that point. Let's see if Marshfield's defense can force maybe a three and out here. That'd be a great look for the defense. We'll see what the choice is. A lot of guys for the Rams have hung up their hats. A lot of the starting guys, Jack Stevens, Tormas, Luke Richardson, all know that their day over, Molander as well. 
Marhola going to take the snap. He's going to air this one out deep. He has a receiver. It'll fall incomplete, but a pass interference will be called on the Rams. That was number 24, Ryan Medeiros in coverage. That was Chris Johnson on coverage there. He's going to get the call. Ryan Medeiros, 23. Chris Johnson, 24. Those two are going to become a quarterback duo in the future, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, so many young guys. You've got Bongelotti graduating this year. So you're going to need to fill that position just as he has Which for one? Gio Joseph. Jamison uh, Bongelotti is a junior. Oh, Jamison's a junior. Excuse me. There we go. Tommy is the senior. Tommy's a senior, yeah. So they're going to have to step up. So is Nick Gerard is also a senior. So that yeah. whole line is going to be completely different next year. That's and crazy. that's high school football. That's college football. That's true. I mean, you got some young guys. You're still going to probably have Nicholson and Amaral on that right side. Oh, yeah. They'll and be there we'll, for years to come. And we'll, we'll see what the left side does for there with, with McGowan and Kean. But Bongelotti will be a graduating member of that offensive line. But he's also the only senior coming back from previous years. They're going to hand this one off to the outside. This is real. And he'll have enough for a first down until he's pushed out of bounds. Bring up first DC down Dallas for the Harbormen. And, and 53, Kyle Caselli will come back in the game. Yeah, a couple of these hang on linemen are laying ferocious pancake blocks right now. And now, just like that, the ball is on Marshall's 40 again. And we know how this goes every time. Let's hope it rains true once again. Jamison Bongelotti and Jake Ekstrom with the hats on right now. And there, you, know, you see Marshfield High School, even when you're not playing, you still have a huge role on the field. The senior guy's not in the game, or excuse me, the varsity guy's not in the game. Seal Collin plays Varholak. Going to roll out to the right. He's got a wide open wide receiver, but oh no! Through oh, his oh, hands. That was a touchdown Chase pass. Could not convert. Chase Bailey, the junior, the intended receiver. And he, Andrew, he had him wide open. Yeah, that was a gift to this Marshall secondary. That's a, that's about how wide open Jake D'Antonio was at the start of this game. Yep. So maybe that kind of kind of lit a fire under Marshall's butts right there, kind of got them going right that there. Hopefully up. that kind of alarmed them. I'm for sure that the coaches are aware of this situation. I hope yeah. that the players are as well. <laughs> well, it'll be a second down and 10 for the Hartman. We're down to 7.05 remaining. This game is pretty much coming to an end with the running clock, 47-14. Barholak in the gun. He's going to take the snap, hand off to his running back, Stocks to the outside. And the senior's got a ton of space. He's finally pushed out of bounds, but enough for a first down, and the Hardman continue to move the chance. Yeah, Hingham's running game has been the story of today. However, it's mostly been staying core with the running. That was Jack Stocks, the senior running back, getting some snaps there for Hingham. And I want, I, I'm assuming that he's going to stay in. But, yeah, that was another good run for him right there. Hingham's running game been dominant this whole this whole time. Yeah, I mean, at this point in the game, it's it's over. You want to get your senior touches. You know, that's what he's been playing. Number two back to St. Croix, who is the senior captain. So they're going to go two back here. Most likely the rest of the game. But a St. Croix in the backfield right now. Varhola going to take the snap. He's looking to throw pressure coming, and he's going to be wrapped up and sacked. The whole defensive line. Oh, a little bit extra there. Marholak took exception to the sack being thrown there. A little bit of the frustration. Will no Scott, flags thrown. Will Scott, the first one, to get the sack. Get Huge Mahalo sack for Marshfield. It will bring up second down. Yeah, they were lucky they didn't get uh, flagged for an unnecessary roughness call there because they were on him for a little extra time after the whistle was blown. They got lucky there, but great sack there from Will Scott. You'll have to see that Connor Scott also came in, yep. able to get the quarterback down right there. So the Scott brothers are blitzing the backfield here as we got 5.33 remaining in the first, fourth quarter. Varholak going to take the snap. He's going to roll out to the right with pressure coming. Still rolling out, looking for an open receiver. He's got someone wide open for a first down. That is Bailey. Oh, Actually not a first down, Bailey. excuse me. It's going to be just short to bring up a third down for the Harbormen. Now it's time to see what Marshfield's defense is all about. Once again, they're being tested with some adversity here. Got to see if they can get the stop on what looks to That's be third, third and four, four on the 23-yard line. Yeah, the JV unit of the Rams trying to make a stand. They had a big fourth and ten on the previous drive. Trying to hold strong again. It'll be third down and about four coming up for the Harbormen. Three receivers with a tight end to the right, one to the left. And St. Croix behind Varholak, who's going to take the snap. Looking to throw. Air this one out deep, and he's going to throw it out of bounds. Pressure coming once again wow, for the Rams. That was Justin Amaral, who's been playing outline. This time he gets home to the quarterback That'll to get some pressure. It'll be fourth down and four 
for Hingham. You love to see that from Justin Emerald on the D-line, getting it done on both the D-line and O-line. His older brother, Jay Emerald, was an absolute yep. unit on the offensive line a, quite a couple years ago. Uh, on fourth and four here, let's hope Marshall can hold him again, get the offense back out there, shoot the rest of this clock, and in this game. I mean, talk about that that old, old O-line from the Rams back in those years with Masterson. I mean, you had Ross Olinger, you had Jay Emerald on that right side of the offensive line, which was a huge part of that team. And his brother trying to do the same. This is going to be blown dead. And a timeout taken. So with 3.45, I think we're actually going to keep you here because we got running time. I mean, Andrew, this game has been out of reach, it feels like, from the beginning. Rams, first play they have, it was a long D'Antonio touchdown after a five-yard penalty. Davin True ran that in next. And from that point on, it was all Tormas through the air. He threw a deep ball to Brilliant twice, another one to Luke Richardson for a touchdown, and the Rams' offense has been on fire. It was also Luke Leary on the defensive end who recovered a fumble, and a little return six for him finds the end zone. That's the third time this year a Marshfield defender has scored a touchdown. And the Rams have just been so dominant so far today. Absolutely. You cannot have asked for a much better day. A scoop and score. We got a couple interceptions as well. Tormas breaking the passing touchdown record, most importantly. Mm -hmm. And it's it's homecoming day. It's a great day for Marshfield football. Oh, yeah. It's been a beautiful Saturday afternoon here. We've had some nice sun. Got a nice cool breeze coming in here. Finally starting to cool it down a little bit. It got really hot up here at one point. And another time out. Oh my it's goodness. It's going to be taken. Look at the Hingham guys. They're not even running anymore. Yeah, I mean, I can't blame them either. The funniest part about all this is that it's a running clock too. So we've filled off like two and a half plays of clock at this point because it continues to run. But Hingham will, after this loss, they will fall to four and two overall in a big Patriot League matchup. Marshfield still undefeated in the Patriot League. I believe they are three and oh. When it comes to that, 5-1 and one on the year. I mean, they have had the tougher schedule. Marshfield has been on fire this year. I mean, they've had to play some really tough games. Methuen, Mansfield, and Mansfield, but they have answered the call. Fourth down will finally be played out now. Barholak going to take the snap. He's looking to throw to the outside. That ball tipped away and almost picked up. They almost had another one. Great coverage by the Rams again. I believe that was Chris Johnson on the coverage. And he's going to get hugged by the guys on the sideline. Coming in, making a great play. Ryan Medeiros also in to almost pick that one off. That was Ryan Medeiros' second time almost <laughs> grabbing an interception. I guarantee you, once he gets his first pick, he's going to look back at today and thank himself for doing it today oh, so yeah. that he can secure it later on. <laughs> With a minute left, you got to imagine Marshall's offense heads out, goes into victory formation, closes this game out. That's it's been a great will win. Probably be it. Last year, Marshall only punted one time. Same thing this year, and it was dominant for the Rams. All phases of the game. D'Antonio had a kick return touchdown as well, and he's got a ton of all-purpose yards. And they got to bring everyone in right now. They're telling these guys, you got to get in when we take the victory formation, and they're going to take a knee. I think Rollinson needs to take one more, and then we'll be ready to get out of there. So happy Saturday and happy homecoming to all of the Marshfield High students who will be attending tonight. That should be a fun one, and it was a great experience here. As Rollinson will take one more knee, and the hey, time well, will wind you. down, and Marshfield. that will do it. Final score here from Marshfield oh, High. 47 to 14, Rams will advance to 5 and 1 on the season. And Andrew was just dominant all game long for the Rams. Yeah, from the get go, as you've mentioned, Marshfield instantly putting points on the board. Three minutes in, the score was 19 0. That tells you everything you need to know about how today's game went. Marshfield, pure dominance over the Hingham Harbormen today, which as a Marshfield fan, you absolutely love to see considering this big rivalry that these two towns have in every sport. 100%. Marshfield going to have some guys coming back. Aiden Nicholson injured, Charlie Carroll and Cole Summers both activated, did not play, but they're going to get inducted into this offense very, very soon with some pieces coming back. For now, that will do it for us here on Marshfield Community Media. Rams win 47-14. Thank you for joining us. I'm Will Nicholson alongside Andrew Youngworth, Jack Doherty on the camera, Sean Leary back in the studio. We appreciate you for joining us here. And until next time, go Rams. 
UCM coverage of MHS Sports is proudly presented by Repel Pest Solutions. Repel Pest Solutions is a full-service pest control company protecting residential and commercial properties from nuisance pests that carry germs and diseases. They are a small, family-run business from Marshfield, licensed, insured, competitively priced. We work to understand your needs and offer an integrated pest solution that's environmentally friendly. Don't be afraid to bug us. Moi Health & Wellness Moi Health & Wellness is owned and operated by nurse practitioner Christine Murphy. We are an integrative wellness center offering medical weight loss, men's testosterone therapy, functional medicine consults and labs, vitamin therapy, Advatex laser skin resurfacing, Botox and dye sport, teeth whitening, and so much more. Moi Health & Wellness has three locations in Lakeville, Marshfield, and Plymouth. And Road to Responsibility. Founded in 1988, Road to Responsibility's mission is to provide the means, the opportunity, and the support necessary to allow citizens with disabilities to take their place as productive members of the community. We are committed to providing all individuals with opportunities to truly live in the community. Through our services, we are proud to enrich and improve the lives of every individual, one person at a time.